Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the um, meeting to order for the Scarborough Town Council's Wednesday, March 15, 2017 regular meeting. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilor Donovan? Here. <coughs> Councilor Rowan? Here. Councilor Foley? Here. Councilor St. Clair? Here. Councilor Hayes? Here. Councilor Chiazzo? Here. Chairman Bayvine? Here. Um, uh, item number four is general public comments. This is your time if yeah. you'd like to speak on any item that is not on the agenda. Again, any item that's not on the agenda, you can um, approach the podium and you have three minutes if you would like to stand up and speak. Oh, I can if you could state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, good evening. My name is Larry Hartwell, and I'm Puritan Drive, Scarborough. Um, I know one of our, our your goals this year is a 3% tax, trying to hold the mill rate to 3% this year. Um, inflation over the last five years has been about 7%. Social Security in increases have been 5.5%, and our mill rate has gone up 22%. Um, Therefore, I'm saying that I wish you would reconsider the 3%, that we shoot for a lower number than the 3%. Um, I think we're doing a great job. I know we can't talk about the school, anybody on this floor talk about the school budget, but as taxpayers, as you are all, as my, uh, that is two-thirds of our, our, um, our budget, two-thirds of our tax bill. And I would just hope that you give them some guidance on a percentage increase this year. I certainly realize, once again, it's deja vu as far as the state and who knows how much we're going to get for, for money. It seems like a like Groundhog Day, so hmm. thank you. That's thank you. Sure. Groundhog Day. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else that would like to speak? Going once, twice, we'll close the public hearing. Um, or public comments, thank you. And item number five, if I could have a motion to accept the minutes from March 1st, 2017. So moved. Second. Any edits or corrections for the clerk to note? Not hearing any, all in favor? And that is unanimous, thank you. Um, adjustments to the agenda, I have none this evening. Items to be signed, um, the treasurer's warrants, I'll do that as the meeting goes along. The first order is order number 17-025. It's a seven o'clock public hearing. An action on the new request for the following food handler's license. A, Shannon M. Gorham doing business as Chowderhead Seafood Restaurant located at 29B Gorham Road. And B, the Holy Donut LLC, DBA The Holy Donut located at 398 US Route 1. Um, if you'd like to speak, you can actually come up to the, um, to the podium and you will have uh, three minutes to speak. So I'll open up the public hearing. Anybody that would like to speak? Going once, going twice, um, we will close the public hearing. And an action um, or motion from the council, please. So moved. Second. Any comments or questions from council? Do I have to say it? Yeah. yeah. Samples. Samples. Donuts. <laughs> 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 holy donut here. <laughs> holy uh, donut. That's next. I have a question, actually. Yes. Yeah, on, 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 Absolutely. To, honesty. Um, to, to the clerk, everything's legit, good. We're Both yes. businesses are, um, well, obviously, always, we always welcome, especially, I know Chowderheads has been there for a while, but obviously the holy donut is filling the space of um, where Tim Hortons was, so that's wonderful. Um, it's always good when businesses fill up and don't sit empty. We like that. So welcome to um, the Holy Donut. I'm sure all of us will be in to sample you. Any other comments or questions? Not seeing any, all in favor? And that is unanimous, thank you. Order number 17-026, it's a seven o'clock public hearing and action on the new request for the following food handlers license and liquor license for Nonsuch River Brewing LLC doing business as Nonsuch River Brewing, located at 201 Gorham Road. If anybody would like to speak, this is your time. You can come up to the podium and you'll have three minutes to speak. The public hearing is now open. Is there anybody that would like to speak on this item? Not hearing any, we'll close the public hearing and um, the pleasure of the board. So moved. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilor Chiazzo? <laughs> Ditto. 
Samples. They have little samples. samples. It's all about samples. All we need is a massage therapist on the same ticket, and we're good to go. I'm sure they have brewery samples here. Um, if there's no other comments or questions, um, the pleasure of the council. All in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you. Order number 16-082 is a 7 o'clock public hearing on the 8th Amendment to the Contract Zone uh, Roman numeral 9 by the residents at Gateway Commons, Divine Capital LLC, formerly New England Expedition, pursuant to Chapter 405, Roman numeral 2, Roman numeral 1.5.C of the Scarborough Zoning Ordinance. Um, with that, if you would like to speak on this item um, for the public hearing, again, you have three minutes uh, per person that can speak. Um, and if you would like to line up at the podium, um, we can open that up uh, for public hearing now. Would you like to get any introduction? Oh, I apologize. Yes. If that would I, be helpful. I'm sorry. Public. I usually do that. I apologize. Just, I, I think it might be helpful before public comments taken. I can provide a quick little history and introduction. Yeah. I know the applicant is here tonight and is prepared to offer some uh, presentation as well. It's up to the council whether, when you want to hear that. Uh, it may be appropriate now as well. Uh, just quickly by way of history to remind the public and the council, uh, this whole conversation around multifamily, which this project is, uh, really started to bubble up through the planning office through the course of the fall and really culminated in a workshop that this council had in early December, actually on December 14th, around the general notion of affordable housing. This project happened to be one of the ones that was in that mix, if you will, and, and uh, fairly far along in its in advanced in its uh, in its uh, development. Um, the project for it to be enabled requires a, uh, an amendment to the existing contract zone. Uh, it's actually the eighth amendment. Uh, this party is stepping into the shoes of some prior owners and there's a lot of history with this parcel in particular with ownership and development um, challenges through the years. And so this constitutes the eighth amendment. This council heard that and passed that uh, initial contract zone amendment on December 21st. And at that meeting, I believe to a person, if not to a person, certainly the strong consensus from this council was affordable housing was a, a lacking component in the <coughs> initial proposal. And I think the developer uh, heard that loud and clear. And so in the intervening weeks and months, the developer, uh, as the con contract zone process requires, has spent time with the planning board to further flush out and really design the project. And has most recently, just February 21st, received preliminary approval uh, and, a, and also approval as part of the contract zone process. And so the matter is back before this council. Uh, I've also used those intervening months uh, to have ongoing discussions or negotiations with the developer to come back to you because it was very clear that you really didn't want to see this project again unless it had um, uh, you know, a strong affordable housing component of it. So based on that directive, uh, I used the opportunity to meet uh, multiple occasions to work through and what I have for you this evening is presented by way of a, a, an amendment that's uh, drafted in writing for your consideration tonight. But in a nutshell, uh, it calls for a payment in lieu of a total of $700,000 that would be go into a, an existing affordable housing initiative fund that, uh, that exists uh, that's under the complete control of this council, though you do have a Scarborough Housing Alliance that I'm certain would love to provide some advice in that regard, should you wish. Um, and at this point, um, I guess I would defer to the chair if you would wish to have a short presentation by the developer for your benefit and that of the public. Unless there's objection from the council, I think that there would be a benefit to have that presentation first. Um, that way um, we can get an overview of where we've been and then we can talk about where we're going when we actually have the second reading. So unless um, anybody here objects, I'd like to have that presentation, and it's um, talking with Tom. It is um, at, at a fairly high level. It's not going to get into a lot of the intrinsic pieces. So, if that's okay, I'm seeing a lot of sh shaking heads. So I'll turn it over. Okay, I think Bill Fletcher might be leading that conversation, and you're right. I believe it is going to be a high-level overview. Um, <coughs> I mean, I may need Dan's help if he's available to, okay. to hook in the laptop appropriately. We broke up. 
as they're getting situated, I did make reference to uh, there's a number of materials provided at your place this evening. I might use this opportunity just to acquaint you with those. Uh, you might want to refer to them as we go. Uh, you will find the planning board minutes there, and that contains perhaps some helpful public comment that the planning board received and certainly the, the votes. Uh, you ready, Bill? I'm ready. Great. I am Bill Fletcher. Um, I'm the attorney. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to ask a procedural question. Um, how is this presentation going to look? Um, so there's a, there's and there's nothing wrong. With, there's a sign that's being used by a different speaker that's not part of this presentation, and I don't want you to be part of that sign if it's not part of your presentation. It's right there on the he right. Can move it. Left. So I just wanted to ask, uh, depending Definitely. on what's on TV and um, that someone else's work, and I want them to get the credit for the work, not you. Great. Thanks. Great. Um, so I'm Bill Fletcher. Um, I'm the attorney for the applicant, uh, and I was here before with the development team in December when the first reading took place. Uh, we received your approval at that time to go before the planning board for preliminary approval. Um, we've participated in two planning board hearings, including a public hearing or planning board meeting, including a public hearing, and we've worked with the town staff and the planning board to. Um, address their comments to the plan, and we think the plan is uh, even better than it was before. Um, so, and that process has gone really well. We appreciate the cooperation of the town staff. Um, we received the unanimous, unanimous approval, as Tom mentioned, of the planning board. So we're here tonight to seek the final approval through following the second reading of the contract zone amendment, and uh, that will allow the applicant to go back to the planning board and seek uh, final approval of the plan itself. Um, we feel that this plan is, is the, right, the right project for Higus Parkway, this particular lot. My understanding is shovel ready and the applicant is eager to get started. Um, it's a luxury project. Um, it's designed as a luxury project and that's how they're bundled and marketed. Um, so it does not itself contain affordable housing as a component, but uh, in conversations with the town staff, as Tom mentioned, um, the contract zone amendment that you have before you tonight now um, includes uh, significant uh, in lieu of payment of $700,000 um, and that's on top of the impact fees that are already associated with this project which uh, in total the impact fees being about a 1.2 million and the affordable ho housing fees uh, totaling 700,000 uh, makes the fee per unit about $6,500 per unit built um, which is nearly $2 million so it's a significant financial cash payment to the town um, and that does put a strain on a project, but nonetheless, it, it's still a financially vi viable project. The applicant still wants to build this project in Scarborough um, and is committed to moving forward. Um, by way of background, the Eighth Amendment, uh, the original eighth, eighth Amendment that you saw did three things and it alleviated certain burdens under the zoning, the density, the mixed use, and it also allowed the uh, growth permits to be issued in connection with the project. The revised uh, amendment you have before you also includes this affordable housing payment obligation. Um, so at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Kylie. Um, I may hold off on that, actually, because I see that my computer is, unfortunately, is updating for some reason, so I may not be able to show you the plan. <laughs> so. But the plan itself looks nice. It's substantially what you saw before. The garages were moved, um, and there are a few um, additional uh, changes that were made, but nothing material to the overall plan. Um, but it, do, it does present really well. Um, so to conclude, uh, you know, we, we really need this approval to move forward. We want to stay on the original construction path. We think it's a solid project. We think it's going to help foster further economic development within the Highest Parkway District. It's going to support the existing businesses there and attract new um, new people as well. Um, so we appreciate your vote tonight um, and welcome any questions at the appropriate time. Um, I think that we're going to the council will hold off on their questions because this is really more informative so that the public can then um, sure. speak on on the changes that have been proposed. Um, so with that, if uh, since the computer is uh, having a uh, update issue. Um, 
Is no no change in that status? No, it's 85% complete. Okay. So it's so anyone, anyone's, anyone's guess. So there, there will be, uh, so um, we, we might ask you to uh, present the rest of this because there is the second reading action under okay. old business and maybe we can uh, turn that over to you for that second part. Great. For the visuals at that time, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, so what I would like to do is actually now open this up to a public hearing. If anybody would like to speak, um, they can go to the podium and um, you will have three minutes um, to speak. Good evening. My name is Art Dillon, 180 Black Point Road. Uh, I'm here wearing a, a couple different hats right now. Uh, first, as uh, operator of Haven's Candies, um, we have a store just across the street from this project. Um, I'm thrilled by the possible increase of potential customers that we might have, as well as the surrounding shops there. Um, being the current vice president of the Scarborough Community Chamber of Commerce, I think it's kind of a no-brainer bringing in some housing like this uh, brings potential workforce to the community taxpayers um, and as current resident um, I think more people to help share the tax burden is more than welcome um, I from what I've seen and heard I think the projects uh, well thought out um, well presented um, and personally I'd be in favor of it thanks thank you Good evening. I'm Cindy Taylor. I'm with Housing Initiatives of New England Corporation. I have spent my whole career in housing, and I would just like to speak to um, a couple of things on this one. One is that I think that if the town of Scarborough is going to provide this kind of density to a development, I think that this is a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity to provide the different levels of housing that we need here in town. And I, I just wanted to explain, because I do affordable housing. I'm very in tune with that. Uh, as you know, I, we are the stewards for Bessie Commons. Town of Scarborough still owns that, but we, we try to do our best every single day to, to provide a nice product for our seniors in an affordable way. I will tell you that we have a three-year waiting list there, and it's very hard to keep up with it. It's very hard to turn these people away. So I feel very strongly about um, this payment in lieu. And you can discount my whatever else I say because of that. But um, you can also give me, please give me some uh, credibility when it comes to thinking about the town of Scarborough. I've lived here my whole life. I've been on the planning board twice. I believe that this is a very good way to structure planning to try to really develop what should be a very nice apartment complex um, on the Payne Road or on Highgus Parkway. Uh, I think that is a very appropriate location. I think that adjacent to that um, retail development is excellent. I think the planning of it has been very well thought out and I, I know that you as a council have thought hard about this density and, and what we can do here in the town. I, I just wanted to speak a little bit about affordable housing because, you know, we live with lots of, I'm going to call them masters. Uh, I'd like to think that um, the requirements that we live under are providing better housing. And I think if you think about affordable housing, and, and I know that what in my discussions with um, Dan Bacon and other people here, we believe that we can leverage that $700,000 and and we can figure out how many units we really need to offset all of the um, the upper income people that live in single family houses that live in these kind of apartments that are not necessarily affordable um, and if you agree that we use a payment in lieu there's a couple of things that come with it that I think are going to be a ben long-term benefit to the town one is the kind of financing that I typically use, which is usually through Main State Housing Authority, um, is very well regulated, which means that they require that I, put, I set aside reserves so that the, the housing continues to look nice. I think you'll agree that I, our facility at Bessie Commons is as well maintained as anything else in town. And if it isn't, please let me know and I'll change it. Um, and the other issue is that 
they require the affordability to be guaranteed and they look at the affordability and we have to require that and we have to look at fair housing. So there's a lot of benefits in that and I don't think we're stigmatizing anybody because of the way the housing is currently being set up. Um, I think that uh, we can do that in a nice way and I would encourage you to not put too many restrictions. If you agree that this payment in lieu could be used to benefit the town of Scarborough, I would um, encourage you to help us work through with you the requirements that you put on that so that we can have the best developed affordable housing in town. It's not for everybody. Not everybody's going to really care who lives in their apartments. And, in, and the flip side of that, in my belief, is that when you go to this density in this community for the first time, we need to make sure it is really well, well developed. And, you know, to put another component of affordable housing on this one, it may be good for a second phase or an adjacent community. I would just like to see this one be very successful. And if that's got a swimming pool component or a community area that requires more money than the people that we typically house could afford, I think we need to look at that. And so I would encourage you to go with the payment in lieu. The other piece that I would just like to speak to is um, the type of financing that, that we have through Maine State Housing Authority is very competitive. And Dan Bacon may have explained this to you as a council, but I, mm -hmm. I'd like to just enforce it. And that is, we, um, if we can bring more resources to the table, and Scarborough is competing with other communities, um, if I can bring uh, a piece that may be $100,000 to about $216,000, somewhere in that range, to the table, on a 40 unit complex, 40 units, I can then be in a better position to win in, in when I am competing with other communities. And so Scarborough being a, my time is up, Scarborough being a community that is, um, you, you know, has a lot of high income areas, we still need to support the people that have always wanted to live here and have spent down or, or don't have money or, or work in our community that don't make a lot of money. That, and I, I can't even name who those are now, but it could be firemen, it could be policemen, it could be anything. We need to provide housing for those folks. So I would just encourage you, I I'm, I'm, would encourage you to um, vote in favor of this payment. Lou. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is John Krasnick. I live at 12 Evergreen Farms Road. Uh, I'm a member of the Scarborough Economic uh, Development Corporation Board of Directors, and I'm also a, a senior analyst in the commercial real estate group at People's United Bank based in Portland. Um, I believe the council has received a letter from the SEDCO board uh, that we hope will provide you with some uh, background information and feedback as you address this issue tonight. Um, the Hagas Parkway has been a continuing focus for the SEDCO board. Um, I guess you could say we're aware that there's been a number of visions at different times for uh, the, the parkway that have never sort of come to be. Um, we've reached out to property owners, developers, commercial brokers in order to get feedback directly from the market. And in June of 2016, we even hosted a joint workshop with the Long Range Planning Committee entitled Office of the Future. And I won't read the entire letter, but I did just want to touch on um, some of what we learned. Um, uh, the concept of large campus style um, office parks is, is sort of becoming outdated and, and the staff, uh, the town staff has even worked with prospects um, who have not been interested in the Hagas Parkway. Uh, they've been more interested and they, they will, they've expressed a desire to be closer to a town center. Um, and, and feel that the Hagas Parkway has, has been uh, too remote. Um, we know that employers throughout uh, southern Maine are experiencing a shortage in um, available workers at all skill levels, and housing is a factor in supporting worker availability. Um, based on some of these trends, um, the, uh, we offer the following observations. Um, one, there is no prospect uh, for this um, property at the time at this time 
Um, the proposed project would create activity on the parkway, and uh, I think it's 288 households um, that could then spur uh, additional economic development. Um, the project will provide a housing choice that is in short supply right now, um, high-end high -end rental housing, um, and, it ha and the project will have the amenities and the location to attract uh, different demographics to Scarborough, including millennials and young professionals. Um, according, and according to the developer, the project would yield between 30 and 40 million dollars in taxable value, um, yielding taxes, which will contribute um, to the town. Um, in, in closing, I just want to say that uh, I sort of want to personally add that those trends that we heard about um, in our discussions are very much uh, consistent with what People's United Bank and other commercial real estate lenders are seeing right now. Um, you think about office space, building you know, new construction is just very expensive right now. And when you combine that with the fact that employers are moving towards less square foot for employees, that's why you're not seeing a great deal of new construction. Retail, the economy is very strong, but you're still seeing a lot of stores um, reduce or even close their stores because of online sales increasing. Um, Multifamily housing is by far the most popular and, and financially attractive asset class right now in commercial real estate um, for both developers and lenders and I really don't think you can overestimate the impact that this project will have on the on the area so uh, appreciate you uh, letting me speak tonight and uh, thank you thank you very much my name is Ben Howard I live on seven Windsor Pines um, since the beginning, um, I, I just haven't had the best feeling about this project as, as a whole. Um, I've done my research and I see that, that apartment, houses, apartment housing is very needed in the community. Uh, throughout southern Maine here, you've seen a number of apartments just get thrown up within the last year, all over by the malls area. Um, the buzzword that keeps getting to me, and you know, if this was just left out of the proposal altogether is this will bring millennials to the community I have no facts no nothing for this as everything online does suggest that we do need this sort of um, housing but for me that the fact that people keep mentioning that Millennials will come because of luxury housing you have Millennials traveling to Haggis Parkway right now I don't know if you've seen the salt pump that place is just packed every every night and it's full of younger millennial people in there. But if you were going to go in there and ask them what type of housing that they would like to live in, I doubt it would be a luxury apartment community out by um, I-95 and up a very popular road that Haggis Parkway has become since we've tried to maneuver traffic there instead of going, uh, I, I don't know what the road is that passes up to the right. Um, you know, it, as long as that was left out, I, I would agree with uh, this project as a whole, but I just don't see it bringing millennials. We live in a beach community, yet this luxury apartment is, is I, I don't know exactly how many miles away from the beach it is, but for me it feels like it's out on the edge of Scarborough, out by I-95. To, to bring to more points on that street, you have Horizon Solutions, which is a pipe and wire way, and you have the salt pump which is, you know, what is a millennial recreational center and, and other things. So to me, just throwing in this housing just kind of keeps confusing me as to what Haggis Parkway is becoming. Um, again, I'd just like to say it, it's more just the buzzword millennials. I, 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 I just don't see it happening. I see a lot of people just feeding into the idea that, oh, we could get millennials to move here. That They're not interested in that. I've gone up to communities up in northern Maine, um, such as Kingsfield, and uh, sat at the bars, and they were surprised by the number of millennials moving to the communities up there just because they want to get out of the cities and live this more royal lifestyle, where down south here is changing more towards to being that city life that their parents grew up in or where they came from. So in conclusion, I know this project will probably get passed, but I, I just would like people to realize that I, I'm just a little bit wary of the idea that millennials will come. So thank you. Uh, have a good night. Thank you. 
Anybody else that would like to speak on public hearing? Uh, good evening. My name is Rick Cheney. Um I'm here wearing, well, one hat in particular um, uh, that says Council to the New England Expedition, which at one point owned this property and still owns the uh, property across the street, the Gateway Shops, uh, where Cabela's and others are located. Um, I'm also on the SEDCO board, but I'm not speaking on behalf of the SEDCO board, but I would support everything that John said and uh, support what's said in that letter. Uh, I'm on the, the uh, Long Range Planning Committee and I've looked at a lot of the issues with Haggis Parkway. And I spent more than 12 years of my professional career working on this project and for better or worse, I'm the architect of the existing contract zone agreement. Um, we all know that the Haggis Parkway at one time was hoped to be an office park complex. Um, this site in particular was approved for a very large uh, state-of-the-art uh, office building for Fairchild that unfortunately was approved and was about to start about midway through 2008 and we all know what happened then and that project never went ahead. Uh, the, New England, the, New England, uh, the New England Expedition, Barry Feldman, worked tirelessly for many years after that to try to find another user of this site and it simply didn't happen. I don't think that the project today should be looked at, however, as the best alternative given what we couldn't get on the Haggis Parkway. I think what's happened is the Haggis Parkway is evolving. Uh, the uh, speaker before me mentioned uh, the, uh, the salt pump, um, a great project for that site. Um, the corner is, is going to develop. There's going to be other development across the street. We know that um, Scarborough Downs is up for sale. I think this particular project is the absolute right project for that site. Um, I don't think the developers would be doing it if they didn't think they could get people to live there. I'm not sure they'll all be millennials. Maybe there'll be a few of us uh, baby boomers there. But the point is there will be people there. It'll be a catalyst for that area. And I think that it is the right project at the right time to help spur development along Haggis Parkway. So I, I strongly support it. Uh, Barry Feldman and the New England Expedition strongly support it, and I would hope that the council will unanimously vote to approve this Eighth, eighth Amendment so the project can proceed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mike Scammon. Uh, I live on 39 Ingleside Drive. Um, I bought the uh, the property that's uh, um, forward to be developed. Hopefully, um, we've been uh, waiting uh, a number of years to see something happen along Haggis Parkway. We've been patient. The landowners have been patient. The town has been patient. Um, I support this project. My family supports it. Uh, it's about time that it gets developed. Um, this particular use uh, sounds like it will work. Um, it will be a benefit to the to the town. Um, we've waited too long, and it's time to develop this land. So, I would I would just reiterate what Rick Shane just said. Um, let's let's vote for this project. It will be a value. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else that would like to speak? Public hearing. Got my chart. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Let's see. Hello, I'm Suzanne Foley Ferguson, 331 Black Point Road. Um, uh, my guess is that the entire council would love to approve this. Um, it sounds like everybody really loves this project. Um, so, and I only have two goals tonight. One is that I hope that you will treat this project as the contract that it is and that you will negotiate the best deal for the community, the taxpayers. <clears throat> um, but the second goal is to 
uh, get away from the myth of affordable housing, and that's what this chart is about. Because as you guys discuss affordability, um, most people are thinking Section 8, and I just want to show you what uh, affordable really means. Actually, uh, my three minutes are going to be up. <laughs> so um, affordable, um, the area median income right now is $76,000. 80% of that is what our ordinance talks about, and that's $62,000. What we're talking about when we talk about affordable housing costs, which include heat and utilities, at 100% of median income, you're talking about a rent that's $1,900. That's pretty considerable. At 80%, it's $1,500. I can tell you right now, I cannot afford that rent. I'm going to admit it. What you have right in the second... Um, this here is a 2015 <coughs> distribution of who in our community has that kind of income. This, the yellow center, that's how many people are in the 60 to $76,000 range. On the, on the right side of that is obviously out, over, and that is um, under. Um, so these are adjusted for household, and there's a whole lot of details. I don't have three minutes. But who makes that kind of money? Well, first year teacher makes $35,000, 36, four years after 39, 15 years after working in Scarborough Public Schools, these are Scarborough numbers, $58,000, a master's degree, $38,000, a school psychologist who works for 25 years in school system is only making $72,000 a year. So when we're talking about affordable housing in this community, we're talking about these kind of people. Don't be afraid of the numbers. I believe that this project is the perfect place to include affordable housing. And I think $1,500, I think they can handle one building out of 12 buildings to include affordable units. Obviously, I was outvoted in my committee, my affordable housing committee. We would prefer to see it included, but they, they will support an in lieu of fee. And the in lieu of fee is no question that you can leverage it. However, you guys have just been provided with information that shows that Portland gets $100,000 per unit in lieu of affordable units. We're talking about a fee, a $700,000 fee, which is, seems really significant, but is it? What is the cost to actually produce a unit? Um, Portland got $570,000 or is going to get it for just six units in lieu of fee. So again, I, my goal was to show you don't be afraid of what is affordable and also that you should treat this project as the contract it is and negotiate the best deal for our community. I would encourage that the fee is too low that's proposed. And then I, of course, for all the reasons I've described in the past, believe that inclusionary zoning is the way we ought to go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Dunneman, can you take down that sign for us? Go ahead, sir. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Phil Grondon. I'm the treasurer and one of the owners, R.J. Grondon and Sons. We are one of the owners, along with um, uh, uh, Glenn Grant and Ken and Don Arowski, on the property. Um, we involved, got involved in this property just over a decade ago when we were doing the earthwork for the um, infrastructure that's currently in place. Um, unfortunately, as you heard, the, the um, project ended up uh, not going the way we wanted to due to the 2008 financial meltdown. Um, since then, um, the prior developer had worked diligently to try and find a user for the property. He was not successful and um, um, ultimately turned the property over to us um, uh, with the deed in lieu. We have been diligently looking as well to try and find a user for this. Um, I can't say we've had people beating down our doorsteps, unfortunately. Um, what we were fortunate, though, is um, um, Ben Devine and his group came to us uh, with this proposal. Um, he uh, is someone that we have worked with before, 10 years ago, on the Scarborough Gallery project, uh, which came out well, I think, for everybody. We know we were very happy with it. We actually chose Ben over, um, at the same time, a, another developer who actually offered us a little more money, 
but we felt that he was the right person to make this happen. Um, we strongly hope that um, uh, everybody votes in favor of it. Um, the other concern um, uh, in regards to what was mentioned about uh, cutting the right, the best possible deal for the town, um, any deal, if made too expensive, will fall apart. Um, if the town ends up making this too expensive for the developer to go through, we're going to be looking at a piece of property that's going to be very hard to sell, and I'm afraid that we'll be owning it for the next five or more years um, if there's an economic turndown in the not-so-distant future. Um, this was not, uh, we didn't want to get into this development this way. Um, we just assume um, uh, dig earth and make our living that way, but uh, this is our single best way of um, uh, getting our money back on this. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mary Davis. I've been a Scarborough resident since 1994. Um, I live on Barbara Avenue. In my day job, I work for the City of Portland. I'm the Housing and Community Development Division Director for, for the city. Um, Portland has been undergoing a, um, in, I would say, intensive um, review of their housing policy. And recently, in 2015, they adopted an inclusionary zoning policy, which would require um, developments with 10 or more units to include at a minimum 10% uh, affordable. And we define affordable as workforce housing at between 100 and 120% of the area median income. Um, in developments where the developer chooses uh, not to create those units in um, their development, we have an, a fee in lieu of 100000 per unit. Um, we came up with that fee in a variety of different ways. There were a couple studies. We um, engaged GPCOG to do a housing study for us. Um, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development did, on its own, um, a uh, market analysis. Um, and we, uh, in Portland, have the benefit of being a um, HUD entitlement community, which means we get federal resources and subsidies that we can invest in housing development. Um, so we looked at the uh, cost, development cost per unit on some of those projects that we invested in, and our goal was to try and um, create a fee in lieu that was as close to possible to the actual development cost per unit. Um, 100,000 is not that number. Um, it's significantly more. Um, but as the gentleman right before me mentioned, um, you can impose fees on a project um, that make a project um, not buildable. Um, developers can only absorb so much cost. Um, so, a, and I'm not speaking to say that Portland's solution is Scarborough's solution. Um, and I'm very pleased to see the number of uh, rental housing proposals um, uh, that are going through the process here in town. Um, I think that's very encouraging. Obviously, a healthy community is a diverse community, diverse in a variety of different ways, including economics um, and income. It would be great if each rental housing development could include that diversity within it, and that's not necessarily going to be possible in each development. Um, so um, I would say, you know, I trust that you will negotiate the best deal for the town, as was previously mentioned. I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, and again, I'm not saying Portland's solution is Scarborough's solution. But I think if we begin to look at the issues of um, housing, housing supply, housing affordability as a regional issue, and we co cooperate regionally, um, I think we can see some you know, significant increases um, and fill that demand that's out there in the market. Um, South Portland is very close to adopting an inclusionary zoning ordinance, um, Cape Elizabeth has one. Um, so uh, I see that as a trend that may be happening um, in our region. Um, so I think the $700,000 fee in lieu that, that's been negotiated so far um, is significant, and it can leverage um, 
a lot of other resources, the, the programs that one of the previous speakers talked about, uh, Main State Housing, Low Income Housing Tax Credits, all of those kinds of things are resources that um, um, could help build affordable housing. And affordable means of a, a lot of different things. It doesn't have to be Section 8 housing. Um, the numbers you saw before, workforce housing, there's a significant number of people in our community, in our region, who um, are paying unaffordable amounts for their housing. Um, and anything that we can do to um, help that, we should do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Larry Hartwell, 9 Puritan Drive. Um, I saw the, uh, the figures there on the median income in Scarborough or what that means. Um, I would just kind of segue back into what I was up here talking about before about our tax rate and to look at affordability of the taxes. So we'll just segue back into what we're here for. Um, I think the fee in lieu is, is great. $700,000 is a real number. It's significant money. Um, as far as having low-cost housing in that development, um, we do have several hundred others uh, apartment houses in the pipeline right now that will satisfy other needs. This one, as far as I know, is our only luxury one. Um, as I said last time I spoke on this issue, is that this developer we've worked with before, we've worked with successfully before. That's a big plus. Um, as far as what they want to build, they've already built one in Connecticut. So as I said before, it's just a different zip code. I live out in that area. I think it's, it's uh, you know, we kind of looked at it from you know, is it uh, the impact on the school is going to be less than single family housing? As far as 288 units there versus 288 homes, what's our minimum lot size in, in Scarborough? Two acres or so? So we're saving hundreds of acres that will normally be taken up by single family houses. We also allow 135 permits a year. So we have 270 permits that we give out every within two years without questioning it. Um, I know we all, several of you and myself, was really surprised when we, when we first saw the numbers of 700 permits and so forth. And then when you get into the weeds and you see how it's, it's, it's going, it's not, you know, it's not scary. I think it's a great location for it. Um, and it's a great opportunity for us to finally do something with the Hagus Parkway. It's been there for, for about 20 years. The town has spent millions of dollars. These property owners have put, spent millions, and we've gotten almost nothing for it. So I uh, certainly support it uh, as, it's, uh, as it's proposed. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else that would like to speak at the public hearing? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> what did I tell you, Mr. Grant? <laughs> he threatened me earlier. <laughs> <laughs> And, oh, hi. Um, <laughs> you're going to be surprised. I told you this. I said to C Council Chair Sean Babine that he was going to be surprised at my comments tonight. Instead of rehashing hash and saying of all the things, encountering things that we've said before, I'm just going to say that we fully endorse this project for the good of Scarborough. Now, this is a Scarborough kid talking. Also, the staff at Scarborough, the municipal offices, the council, as you sit here, the planning board have put significant time, effort, and questions into this. And with, I think the project has been worked through very well and there's no reason that we should continue to work on it because it's 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 really ready the time is ready we've missed other opportunities by riding over the hump and and uh, waiting for the economy to fall and uh, I just think that I want to thank you on behalf of our part of the deal for the efforts you put in and this is not my first time at the mic but that's the first time I've said that <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Grant. 
Jean Marie Katarina, 311 Gorham Road. Um, I apologize I'm late to the meeting, and if I'm repeating anything you've already heard, I was at a PACS meeting, which is kind of interesting because at the PACS meeting they brought up over and over again the lack of uh, housing, uh, whether it be affordable or whatnot. And as a real estate broker, <clears throat> I'm certainly familiar with that issue. Um, I have looked at this uh, development. I've talked to a number of different people on it. Um, I feel that um, it's absolutely something that would be very beneficial to the town of Scarborough. I also know that there are certain windows of opportunity for developers in which to do projects, and the window of opportunity is now. I see absolutely no reason whatsoever to delay this in any way, shape, or form. Um, it will be a tax benefit, a net tax benefit to the town, and it will also be uh, a benefit to the people of, of this community also. So that's it for me. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else that would like to speak? Going once, twice, three times. <laughs> we'll close the public hearing. Thank you very much. Moving on to old business, order number 16-082. Um, this is a second reading on the Eighth Amendment of the Contract Zone, New Roman numeral 9, by the residents at Gateway Commons, Divine Capital, LLC, formerly New England Expedition, pursuant to Chapter 405, point Roman numeral 2, point Roman numeral 1, point 5, point C of the Scarborough Zoning Ordinance. Um, what I would like to do is um, uh, do two things. First is I'd like to... Um, turn it back over to Tom and to the presenters and if you're ready to do the uh, second part of the presentation we could do that now and then I'll explain the second part later so um, while they're setting up um, a just one comment so um, as custom with all of our items um, under regular business is that there will be a opportunity for public comment um, after the finishing uh, presentation piece as well. How are we doing? <laughs> We're still having some technical difficulties. Do you want to move into this one and see if that's it? Yeah, it's connected. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> but he plays one on TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this kind of looks like MacGyver. <laughs> Dan could figure it out. Get the slideshow. I might point the council's attention to the screen, the quality of the color of those screens. Um, <laughs> the foreshadow to perhaps some budget discussions we have. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, First no. time I've ever seen him look pink like that. That's well point well made. This better be good, huh? <laughs> So thank you. Um, good evening. My name is Kylie Mason. I work at Sebago Technics. I am also a Scarborough resident. I've been here for about 12 years. So it's my pleasure to fill in for Will Conway, whom I think you've seen uh, previously. Um, 
So as it's been mentioned, the plan has been, a full application was submitted to the planning board. It did receive unanimous uh, preliminary approval. Uh, we've been working pretty closely with the planning staff, um, members of public safety. There's been uh, some refinement to the plans. Um, I think overall it's been a very positive experience. I think there's been very positive feedback. Um, the frontage, uh, just to give you a bit of details, you can see uh, from the rendering, um, it does have primary access on High Guest uh, Parkway. It does have a connector to the existing uh, infrastructure. There's 12 buildings in total, each with 24 units, certainly a number of um, enclosed parking uh, for the residents. And as you can tell, plenty of green space surrounding it, um, both on the outside, internally, it's filled with uh, a number of amenities that I think are great for the Scarborough community. And certainly, um, I think will create a great, great place for the residents. So uh, I wanted to be brief. I'll let you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, you have question? yeah, questions? Yeah, questions? Just one. Uh, it was mentioned that there were some. Uh, hey, um, could you go? I'm sorry, yeah, we had sorry. a couple of questions. Yeah. Uh, there have been some changes to the physical layout um, since the first reading. Is that correct? Uh, they have, but they're, um, they mostly have to do with um, uh, some small tweaks to alignments, um, making sure that turning radiuses accommodate um, public safety equipment. And were those changes? Um, uh, based on input from the planning board, or were those inputs that are changed? Those are, your own? Those are inputs uh, made from public safety, okay. and certainly through the planning process, we'll refine the plans. Okay, thank you. Mm. Any other questions? Apologies. I was looking at the, ori uh, the original uh, picture. The only thing that seems to, other than small adjustments for the alignment, the only thing that's really changed is in the lower right hand corner, there looks like three. Buildings? Uh, correct. Two buildings and one garage. And now there's only. Our garage. Yeah, so, yeah, but now it's only two buildings on the bottom and the garage is actually above it on the side. Mm -hmm. That's really the only change that I see. Above it on the side. So. You should have two buildings and a garage in the middle. The original, though, did not have the garage oh, in the middle, right, is what right, I'm saying. Right. The difference, oh, the change. Right. Was the garage is in the middle where it was not here. It was actually a little right. further up on the side right did you add some berming um, I think that would be probably refined in the landscape process with the planning board I don't mm. think I could speak to any specific okay. areas right now Great. any other questions yes just a good question because I know where <clears throat> I know at least what's in front of us we're waiving the recreational fee impact fee mm -hmm. because you're gonna have a lot of amenities on site can you go into a little bit of detail about like how many miles of running trails will you have? How many miles of walking trails? What sort of amenities will you have on site so people won't be wanting to use the, the public? Right. So I don't think there's a formal trail proposed, unless I'm mistaken, as part of the project. Um, internally, in terms of the amenities, it's really programmatic. It's going to be green space, the pool, the community room, uh, areas for um, community members to have pets, and then just the tie to the community. So no, I mean, so I mean, I, I guess if we're calling these luxury apartments and you think about mm -hmm. millennials that we want there with incomes of over 100,000, you've probably got a lot of people that are runners, bicyclists, mm -hmm. really active lifestyles. So those, those aren't contemplated on site. I would think that um, based on the surroundings, um, that would be something you could look at in partnership with Scarborough, but again, our, our greatest asset as a community is the Eastern Trail. The majority of our community, I mean, even myself, drive to the Eastern Trail to use that for running and walking and biking. So. Yeah, and I think that's part of my point, because we're having a real tough time funding the, the gap in the Eastern Trail, so that recreational impact fee could be really powerful at, at helping. Mm -hmm. I just add that the community also contemplates a clubhouse and dog wash and a fitness center and, and I, as I understand it, trails, you know, walking, walkability within the development itself. So there are, there are other additional um, amenities associated with the development. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. 
Um, it, it's hard for me to see because I forgot my glasses. I apologize. Are there going to be sidewalks or walking areas in this? As there well? are there are defined pathways, and it is hard at this scale. If I if I were to pull it in, you'd be able to see the difference. That's in okay. Color, as, long, as long as they're part of the proposal, so there absolutely. will be ability for pedestrian traffic walking through the absolutely. And, okay. and from a Thank local you. standpoint, it's a fairly good loop. Okay. Thank you. Other questions for the developer? <clears throat> Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, because it's on TV, I believe it's being seen on TV, would you be able to close that? And I think that would should automatically Shutting it off, but I can do re very well. <laughs> <laughs> that should, there we go. Thank you. Um, before I move into um, um, Tom, I just want to kind of explain how this is going to happen. What, I, what I'd like to do is after I explain this is then turn it back over to Tom for any uh, follow-up given the presentations, any comments from staff if it's necessary. It's his choice on that. But I do want to at least explain how the motions and things will go because I want to make sure it's not overly complicated. And I've um, we had to make sure that for legal purposes that we did this ac accurate. So what will happen is that um, the primary motion must be similar or exact to the first reading language. So what will happen is that we will move a second reading of what was originally read on our first reading on December 21st, I believe was the date. Mm -hmm. After that, any amendments, including the negotiated point that we're at, which should be the first amendment, um, will then come after that in sequence. And um, there are two, um, in addition to the negotiated position, it's my understanding that we're being presented with two other amendments from council um, and that they will then come in. Um, keeping in mind uh, two uh, procedural points. First is that any amendment that is presented, including the negotiating point, only needs to pass by a four to three vote. The main motion, um, once we get done with all the amendments, we go to back to the main motion, must pass five to two by our zoning ordinance. Um, it says that a, a, a two-thirds vote of a full council must pass, so therefore that's five to two. If someone was absent, it would be actually four to three, but it can never be less than four. So um, to keep that in mind as we go through that, because um, I'm going to try to make sure that we go through this relatively smoothly. Um, so I want to kind of uh, have everyone kind of understand that. So with that, and before public comment, because we will have public comment, Tom, would staff, or you like to add yeah, any just a, items? a couple of things. I, I began to orient you with some materials in front of you. So as Chairman Babine mentioned, uh, we did have the luxury of some sense of what counselors were looking for, and we have prepared for your consideration, uh, though it must be, all of these must be offered by formal amendment, uh, three different possible amendments. So they're all clipped together, and they're, uh, We've tried to label them clearly as to the sponsor, if you will, or the requesting counselor. Uh, in addition, um, at your places this evening, we provided a bit of an overview on kind of the opportunities using the affordable housing in lieu fee. Uh, some of those comments were offered uh, from the podium tonight, but we've offered some um, fairly consistent comments from other conversations we've had with other developers as well. And lastly, uh, it was mentioned earlier about the impact fees I have provided just for your interest, um, an outline that shows all the different fees associated with this project uh, for your consideration. In terms of staff, uh, we are available uh, as resources to you as you go through your process. If there are questions, um, by all means, we're pleased to, to assist. At this point, I don't think we have any prepared comments, though. Great. With that, I'd like to actually open it up for public comment. If anybody would like to speak on this as an opportunity to speak, um, I would ask that if you are uh, speaking a second time is to um, kind of synthesize, maybe if you wanted to repeat anything, synthesize that and add um, additional information because you do have the three minutes. So, thank you. Okay, um, Marge DeSanctis, uh, 54 Beach Ridge Road. I'm the chair of the Scarborough Housing Alliance and first I want to remind the council that the Scarborough Housing Alliance did present a, a uh, guidance statement, whatever you want to call it, at our last meeting, that our, our preference is always to put affordable within the integrated into the development. And so that's like the number one preference. However, should the developer leave because we push the issue too hard or there's other reasons and they should leave, then we would be out the affordable housing as well as the in lieu fee. So, um, and in the case of the Divine Project, where it's going to be luxury, um, they may find the in lieu fee uh, more palatable than, than um, trying to put in the affordable. But I really also wanted to let the, count, uh, the council know of something that the Scarborough Housing Alliance has been working on in the last um, couple of meetings. 
we uh, prepared a letter to, to go out to the developers. And this letter um, was prepared requesting a meeting to engage with the uh, developers in a conversation to better understand uh, what their challenges are they're facing, and to see if there's something we can do as a Scarborough Housing Alliance to help facilitate affordable housing. So uh, the letter was sent out on February 21st uh, by Tom Hall, our, our town manager, and it was sent to 12 developers, and we got that list from um, the planning department. Uh, of those 12 developers, seven have responded so far, and all of them have expressed an interest in meeting with the alliance. So uh, I think that's very good because then we would have that opportunity to, to talk about where we're trying to go and, and how we can get there. So should we secure the divine, um, the, fee, the in lieu fee from the divine um, corporation, we may be able to work with one of those developers who specializes in affordable housing or is more um, generous to putting affordable housing into their projects. And there is that possibility, I know um, Dan Bacon has, has verbally talked to some, but we don't have anything in writing, that we may be able to get more than the 29 units that we would have gotten um, as their 10%. And um, so I have this item on our March 22nd agenda to, to, for our meeting agenda for the Scarborough Housing Alliance to talk about what we can do and possibly do something by the fall that we can possibly get a memorandum of understanding or some commitment of what we could do with one of these developers. So we have some time to meet with the developers that we sent this letter to, trying to get more information and cooperation and that hopefully we can get that information to work on something and get that um, package together so that we can move forward hopefully by the fall. That's, you know, but like I said, if, I'm just going to put that on the March 22nd agenda so that, that everybody on the committee can, you know, have input and we have some that are very experienced in this. So um, that's my statement. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Sean, can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, can I ask you a question? Can, 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 as, can you go to the podium? Um, as chair of the Scarborough Housing Alliance, I guess I'm just, a, I just want to clarify for, for my own, because I am, I do have an amendment that I, I'm hoping to offer at some point. Um, I, I thought at our last meeting, the Scarborough Housing Alliance issued a statement. We did. And that was for inclusion, correct? No. No. That was, that was saying we preferred to have um, the, affordable housing integrated into the development. However, you should we not be able that. to get that, we would be more than happy to take the money. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't say it that way. Um, and work with a developer who would do the affordable housing, because the ultimate goal is for us to do affordable housing. I mean, that's, that's the end goal. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so, so we wanted to state that our preference w is always to put that integrated into development. It doesn't always work. Right. So uh, rather than, you know, push the envelope to the point where somebody might leave the town, we would rather take the in lieu fee and then work with somebody else and, and get it done. Right. Okay. And I just wanted to say um, kudos to you for your, your committee for reaching out to those developers and making that plan because it's... Yeah, I think that will help quite a bit in us moving forward Thank with you. affordable housing. I appreciate it. Thank you. Are we doing follow-up questions or later? Yeah, or questions, or? yes. Oh. Just a quick question. I have a document in front of me that, that says we think we can leverage, this document says we can leverage 580,000 or, or let's just say the 700,000 mm -hmm. into 45 or 90 units of affordable housing. And yet in public testimony tonight, we heard that with the main state housing, 100 to 200,000 can turn into four units. So I guess uh, that's we, what the so, Portland um, told us. But yeah, but it, I just, but I just, so I, that's my question to you, I guess, is. Do you, how comfortable are you that you're actually going to take the 700,000 and be able to, to put in place 45 to 90 units? Well, I don't know about the so, 90, but the 45 so, has, has been thrown around yeah. as a potential amount of uh, housing units that we could get uh, with this in Luffy. So, so if, uh, if I can interrupt, a um, couple of things. So this is intended to be a public comment section. So I think that the question that you're asking is a viable one. And if, um, uh, Mr. Sanctus will come back up when we are under debate on the okay, issue. Sure. We can have her answer those questions at the time. Okay. Um, I didn't want this to get too far beyond the public comment section. So, Hi. I actually did forget to say a couple of things. Um, 
So I know everybody's really excited about this project, that it's the right project at the right time, the right location, and I don't disagree. It's also the right project, right time, and right location, perfect location to include affordable housing. And I know it might not work, and I'm, you know, okay, I can live with that. But however, I will say one of the arguments is that these developers don't know how to do affordable housing, but there are partners out there that they can partner with. And in fact, in Portland, there are currently projects right now where market rate units are being partnered with affordable units. The uh, name of developer is Community Housing of Maine. And there's, you know, um, we're talking about 300 units. We're talking about a possibility of 28 incorporated into a project. Um, so I just wanted to you know, if it's not this project, there are partners over there. This is not speculative. It's happening, you know. So I wanted you to know that. And then the other thing about the recreational fee is that <clears throat> I was kind of confused why you guys were eliminating that fee because the recreational fee is a fee charged to developers for the effects on the entire community for recreation. And if they are not providing on-site uh, well, they, oh, they're providing some on-site, but if the, you know, our, that community is probably going to be using the Eastern Trail and using, you know, our fields and using our, and so I don't understand why you guys are allowing that recreational fee um, to be disintegrated or not, or whatever, waived. I, 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 when you discuss this, I'd love to hear the explanation of waiving that fee. That'd be great. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm going to be brief this time, Sydney Taylor. Um, I just wanted to explain the question about uh, how we could leverage these this money, and, um, and I'm going to I'm going to explain it through the Maine State Housing Authority. Um, they have a a very distinct way of looking at how they'd like to fund properties. There's never enough money. There's always soft money required. And this kind of these kind of funds would be leveraged based on a 40-unit project, 40-unit project. If you could make available to a 40-unit project between 100 and 216 thousand dollars, you would be given extra points in their point system. So that's how we kind of came up with this leveraging number. For 700 thousand dollars, I think you could easily leverage 80 units. That's a far more than you're going to get out of this one development. And I think uh, what we just heard, there are many developers. I mean, I'm happy to do affordable and market rate. It's easier to go from the bottom up a little bit to get, a, to, get to the market rate than it is to go from the top and come all the way down to what I truly believe is affordable. In $60,000 is not affordable. If you make $60,000, you're going to be buying a house. You're not going to be living in an apartment by choice in Scarborough. There, you may have people that um, have other reasons why they don't want to invest in property, but that's n they have many choices. I'm talking about affordability that would where people don't have other cho choices for places to live. And if you're going to use your resources here in this community, you, we really need to be thinking about how we're going to service people that don't otherwise have choices. And I just wanted to leave you with that. But you literally, this you can leverage this money far better if you use it in conjunction with the Housing Alliance, and I'd be happy to donate time and work with them. Um, but there's, there's lots of ways we could do that, and I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Can the clerk put that into the minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Any other public comments? Any other comments? Going once, going twice, we'll close the public comments. And if I could... Um, um, have a motion to approve order number 16-082, second reading on the Eighth Amendment, as read so on moved. December 21st, 2016. So moved. Second. And I'd like to recognize Council Donovan for the First Amendment. I'm, I'm not going to read it it's in, in its entirety because it has only been changed in a few material places. And But I will read the whereas clause that deals with the topic that's been the subject of most of the discussion this evening, uh, uh, and then the now therefore clause. Uh, 
Uh, whereas the 2006 update of the comprehensive plan of the Town of Scarborough includes an objective that 10% of new housing units in the community be affordable to low and moderate income households, and Section Roman numeral 7, residential density and affordable housing provisions of the zoning ordinance, enables developments in certain <coughs> districts to contain additional density by providing an affordable housing in lieu fee and Divine Capital proposes to provide an in lieu uh, payment to the Town of Scarborough's Affordable Housing Initiative Fund to enable the Town to make progress in meeting this objective. Now therefore, Divine Capital, its successor and assigns shall pay a total of $700,000 into the Town of Scarborough's Affordable Housing Initiative Fund for the 288 dwelling unit project. This affordable housing in lieu fee requirement shall be paid to the town proportionally by building at the time of building permit issuance with $2,430.56 due per dwelling unit. And that is, I think, the sum and substance of that. Uh, and otherwise, it appears in the document that we've all been presented with. So, so um, is there a second to the proposed amendment number one as presented in the document? Second. Can I ask for clarity before we before the second? Sure. Isn't isn't bullet point five though substantive two, which is the waiving of the recreational impact fee? Did you? I didn't hear you read that. So I don't know. That wasn't in the first document. Uh, paragraph one. Five. five, which is which is just there. Paragraph five reads: Given the active and passive recreational amenities provided within the development project, including the clubhouse with a fitness center and pool, and outdoor active and passive recreation space, the town determines that adequate recreational facilities have been provided for on site, and that a recreational contribution is not required. That's the provision that was that so, followed the one I read. Thank you for the additional uh, summary. If there is a second to the second. proposed amendment, thank you, as presented. Um, council comments and questions? Council Donovan. Uh, I really uh, strongly endorse this project, and I'll be pretty brief in, in identifying since many of them have been covered. This advances our goal of affordable housing. Uh, the planning director, uh, Dan Bacon, has identified uh, as has the Bessie Commons owner uh, identified the ability to leverage. Uh, I think we're going to be able to stretch the dollars in a way that we could never stretch uh, if we tried to apply a 10% rule. I think it's uh, enormously valuable to uh, take the money under these circumstances. I think it will significantly advance our affordable housing goals. Uh, financially, the town is a big winner uh, in this project. The fees, in addition to the $700,000 in fees, comes to about $2.3 million. Uh, there is no town in suburban greater Portland that has a fee structure uh, that charges at these levels. We are unique in this regard, and uh, this project is going to bring in about $2.3 million in fees, uh, uh, including $700,000 for affordable housing. Uh, uh, it ha this project has very low impact uh, on our uh, uh, municipal and school budgets, in my opinion. Uh, the information we have is that there are very low student counts in comparable projects uh, in communities that are similar to Scarborough's. Uh, there's low municipal costs. There's uh, no trash, uh, no plowing, uh, no road maintenance little impact on fire uh, or uh, police. Uh, the location could not be better. It's uh, a lot of times when you bring in a project this large, you're going to have a NIMBY component. Uh, it happens. Uh, here we have people in the neighborhood saying, this is a great addition to the neighborhood. Uh, so I think we're, uh, we're uh, doing very well in that regard. Um, Lastly, I really have been impressed by the development group. Ben Devine uh, and his group 
are true professionals. They've done this before. They have been uh, extremely forthcoming in the negotiations. Uh, it's not always easy. I have to commend the town manager and the town planner for their efforts in this regard because getting to a successful outcome where you have pushed hard but you haven't pushed too much uh, to get the best possible deal is always tricky. As a lawyer, I've known that for uh, many decades. And I think in this case, we've pushed hard and we've gotten a very good deal and this will be quite a uh, substantial contribution to the town of Scarborough. Thank you. Council So I'll, uh, I won't repeat everything that Bill said. We, I think we covered it in the first reading fairly uh, adequately. I, I will uh, remind our, our, my fellow councilors that um, we all have expressed support for this project in some way, shape, or form. I, I've heard pretty much to a T in general that this is a great project for, for the town. Uh, there's been some questions about how we get there uh, and the way we get there. Um, but ultimately, we as a, as a council ad advise staff to negotiate on our behalf and get the best possible deal we could with the developers, and I think we've achieved that and then some. Um, I think we need to honor that agreement. I think we need to honor that process. Um, I think that um, the staff has done an extraordinary job in, in conveying our concerns and our requirements. Yeah. And uh, I think that uh, we would be doing ourselves a, a great disservice not to follow through with that commitment and uh, approve this amendment. Thank you. Other comments? Council Foley. Um, I'll be brief because I have some other comments to come later. But I, I think for me, you know, when I look at what Portland has done, what South Portland has done in terms of their inclusionary zoning uh, piece, if we had been kind of in that same wavelength uh, ahead of this, it would probably be a lot easier conversation because the choice would be you're either doing 10% inclusionary or you're doing the in lieu fee and we've got this set fee and we could move forward very quickly. I think for me specifically the reason um, it's a little bit trickier is that it's a contract zone and we have some other big projects coming up whereby we can't even ask those developers to include different pieces. This is the one time um, that we have an opportunity to ask for some things that we want that, as Bill said, kind of advance our goals. Um, I do support this project of all the projects out there. Um, this is the one I like the best, and that's uh, honestly how I feel. I do uh, feel very strongly about inclusionary uh, models, which we'll talk about with my amendment. Um, I'm concerned about waiving the recreational fee for reasons that have been addressed, and I will add something to that. And I'm just not convinced that our in lieu fee number um, is right. I'm not saying Portland's number's right either. Um, maybe it's 40,000, I, I don't know for sure, but that's where I stand with this piece. So as it is exactly right here, uh, I'm not ready to support it. I do support the project overall. Other comments? So I guess I, I'd just like to say that I, I really like this project. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I've watched that um, piece of land uh, be developed and sit vacant for uh, 10 years. And I think we heard the, the current owners uh, talk about the, the, um, the difficulty they've had at getting a, a, um, a project to come along and, and build out on it. <coughs> uh, additionally, I like this particular project. I like the way that it's been um, designed. I like the use of the land. I think that um, that multifamily housing gives us um, some more diversity in our housing stock. Um, I think you've heard a, a couple speakers talk about how we didn't, um, how it's kind of, it's new for the town. It's new for us. Um, I think that we, um, that uh, I lost my train of thought, but, <laughs> but I'm, like so I'm going to move on. The pool, you like the pool. I definitely like the pool. Yes, <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, so I think that it's um, that it's a really good use of t use of the the land when you look at some of the other uses, whether it be retail or whether it be um, uh, office space. I think you see a higher traffic usage usage pattern, which I think a lot we expressed a lot of concern about. Um, I think that the, the value of the land um, is really going to be enhanced with the, the number of uh, housing units that are built there. Um, 
and I also feel like it's really going to spur development um, and really uh, crack the egg there on, on Hagus Parkway. Um, I certainly um, would love to see inclusionary housing included in this, um, but I'm concerned of making the perfect the enemy of the very good. I think this is a very good deal. I think this is a very generous negotiation, um, and I'm going to support it as, as uh, amended. Comments? Yes, Councilor Hayes. Yeah, and I guess where I am is, again, it's, 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 it's a really tough one, and I, I totally support the project. I'll echo everything everybody said. I think it, it's, the, it's the right place. It's, the, it's a great project. It's going to really be good for business in Scarborough. It's going to be really good, although my concern is really twofold. One, we've talked a lot about being committed to 10 percent affordable housing, and here is the one opportunity where we have to do something. And what I'm a little bit concerned about is the amount of money we're getting is about $22,000 per unit. If 10% if is the number of units we want, and we just heard numbers that are much different than that. Um, and if you look at that, if we just take the 700000 at a cost of 150, that builds us for sure four to six units. That's, that's a long way away from the 28 units that we're thinking about. And to me, I haven't yet seen a clear plan or a clear commitment that we are going to be able to, be able to turn these into the 45 to 90 units that's been talked about. So that makes me a little nervous. I think, I think there's some room in, in the numbers, if you especially look at what's happened in, in what we were told tonight about Portland, Cape Elizabeth, and, and South Portland. They're certainly using different numbers, so I'd like to come back and talk a little bit about that. And two, I think I, I really struggle with waiving the recreational impact fee because, again, I think these are going to be active lifestyles. It was even mentioned tonight that people are going to want to get to the Eastern Trail for recreation. A lot of people in Scarborough use it, but there are no sidewalks or bicycle paths to get from this complex to the Eastern Trail, so there's going to be pressure to do that. Um, there was talk tonight saying, well, geez, we're getting a lot of impact fees. And I just want to point out, every business that comes to Scarborough pay these impact fees. It's not as if you know, this is something special here. Everybody else does it. And I guess the third thing I'd say is I spent three or four years at Hannaford doing acquisition work. I did all of sort of store locations. I did acquisitions. We, we acquired some large supermarket chains. I know how you run performers. When you run performers to move forward, you assume the worst case scenarios. And if you have an ROI, that's great. You move forward with the project. Anything you can negotiate off the worst case is all bottom line. And in this case, there's nothing new here. When, when, when this project came into town, they knew that we had, the, we had the housing alliances. They knew we had the impact fees. Um, and now they're saying, or what we're thinking, they are negotiated something much better. So it's great for them. I'm just not sure this is the best we can do for the taxpayers of Scarborough. And so that's my concern. The way it's constructed right now, I'm not comfortable with it. Other comments? Councillor, are they all one other than myself? I I am, aren't I? I was hoping there was somebody else before me. I can speak if you'd like. It, you can I'm go before to. me. Yeah. Um, so just just at the highest level, because uh, I know there's uh, there's comments that I, uh, regarding the other two that kind of influence this particular piece. Um, so first is um, I have to um, be reflective because I have been the one that has served on the council, not the most consecutive, but the longest, and was here when the original. Uh, Parkway was designed. It was uh, contemplated in the comprehensive plan. We had great ideas and, and um, wonderful uh, theory about what was going to come in. And now we're seeing in the market um, in which basically what we thought was going to go there is not going to go there. And it's not because it can't, it's because no one wants to build it. Um, and so, you know, over the years, you know, development has been stalled by choice because we um, voted against, uh, the council at that time voted against. Um, a People's Heritage Bank coming in for their operations center that is over in uh, the Falmouth exit. Um, and then by the economy itself, it took a downturn and didn't support development. We had a couple of inquiries over time um, about possibly going in there. Other businesses that were in essence were wooed of not leaving their communities um, and staying there. Um, and I think this is a great opportunity because it's very rare do we get to see a chance to, in, in a way, correct our previous actions. Um, because we gave it a chance. We were, you know, we were principled in why we said no to whatever reason it was, and now we're at that chance because what we originally planned isn't going in there. So I do believe that this is a great project. Um, it's absolutely what's needed. Um, and, you know, and I was, in, in my early years on the council, I was one who was very skeptical about growth of this size. 
Um, I was one of the only councillors to vote against the Great American Neighborhood because of the density, because of the impact of the infrastructure, because of all the other issues that came along with that. But even the Great American Neighborhood advocates are telling me that this is the right project in the right place. So it makes sense to me just from a kind of a cultural perspective and where this community is. Um, you know, the other piece is to think about what is the highest and best use of this land right now. Um, based upon the original zone um, and the original um, contract, um, this should be primarily uh, commercial development. This particular project will actually bring us, I believe it was said, about $640,000 a year more in taxes as it is proposed than it was if we were to actually follow what was originally proposed in that particular zone, which to me is a net positive that's not been kind of discussed about what is going to impact. So that's still um, a benefit to us that should be considered. Um, and last is, um, so there's talk about um, policy, really about policy changes around affordable housing and um, even some other issues. And I don't disagree with any one of those. And if the council wants to submit to the ordinance committee recommendations that this is taken up as part of either comprehensive plan or on its own, absolutely. But we should not be using an applicant's request as a means for driving policy. It's not fair to the applicant. It's not fair to the process. And to me, I think it's somewhat unethical to even suggest that we do that on the backs of their particular project. Don't disagree that we need to talk about the formula that is used. We don't disagree about wanting more units. I 100% <coughs> believe that the money that can be used or that we'll receive will be leveraged. I've done this actually when I was in charge of a national housing corporation, not affordable housing. I took $1.5 million and leveraged it to $11 million for housing. There are creative ways that you can do that within this particular project, and there's so many that outside of just even the state of Maine's um, requirements, we, there are so many different opportunities that can be explored, and I think that can be done. I don't believe that we need to use or should be using an applicant's request to be able to do that. I think that this was a um, the best negotiated point that the manager could get us to. I think he did an incredible job. Planning staff did an incredible job um, in their work as well, um, as well as all the other supporting cast members. You know, whether it's Sedco. Um, and Karen Martin and um, the Affordable Housing Committee and all the pieces that really, I think, came to um, a, a nice resolution with this particular project and where we are now. Oh, My turn? Yes. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to be brief because I, I do have a, um, a proposed amendment coming up and I want to cover um, more of what I want to say during that time. Um, but two, I want to just make two, maybe two quick points. Um, one, um, I am the counselor that has been here in concession the longest. Counselor Babine has been here throughout the years. I've been here for six. Um, and I'm, I'll be frank, I mean, I, I'm disappointed in myself as a counselor. Um, you know, part of the reason that I ran in the first place was that I really wanted affordable housing. Um, it was a big deal to me. Um, and I just feel like I haven't worked hard enough for it. Um, I don't think that there's anybody else to blame, and I have to agree with Councillor Babine. We can't take somebody's job that they want to do and then realize that there's issues with it. Um, we should have looked at the ordinance. We should have known that there was a problem with the ordinance, but we didn't. And a lot of times we don't until a lot of these ordinances have been in play for so long that um, we don't know there's a problem until it comes to light. And then it's sometimes too late at that point. So I do think this should go to ordinance. I do think it should get a look at. A look at. Um, maybe no changes will come out of it, but it, my hope is that something will come out of it. Um, and I am, I am, like I said, disappointed in myself. I, affordable housing is a really big deal to me. Um, and it's desperately needed in this town. Um, I'm embarrassed when I talk to teachers or police officers or firefighters that can't live in the town of Scarborough. Those are the meat and potatoes of this town. They're the people that work at Hannaford that can't live here. That's not fair. That's not right. That's not building a community. A community should be full of diversity. Um, nothing, I'll use a term my kids use all the time, but nothing gets my goat more than when someone looks at me and says, yeah, that's a great idea, but not in my backyard. Oh, I'm all for affordable housing, but not, not in my backyard. It's appalling to me. Um, there are so many different people that need affordable housing, and a lot of them, it's not their fault that they need affordable housing. No one ever should be looked down upon because they need affordable housing. Um, I don't 
think, while I would love to include affordable housing in this um, project, I just don't think this project is the project to do it with. Um, these people came in with, a, with an idea and a, propos a proposal, um, and they were very open and frank about it from the very beginning of what they wanted and how they wanted to do it. Um, and so it was my responsibility as a counselor, if I didn't agree with it, to go out and find a way to get what I needed somewhere else, not to piggyback on the back of this. Um, I'm going to leave it at that for now because I do have an amendment and there's a couple other things I want to say. So, Other comments? Not seeing any, um, we will be voting on the amendment as summarized and presented um, in proposed amendment number one. Um, and uh, with that, all those in favor of proposed amendment number one as submitted, uh, please raise your hand. Two, three, four, five, and all opposed? Two. Motion passes. Um, the next amendment is, um, uh, Councilor St. Clair, would you like to propose your amendment? Sure. So mine, um, just, can I just read all the blue, the where at? Absolutely. I think just the highlight. Just the yellow. Well, Either won't way. Make, it won't make sense yeah, if enough. I don't. So my proposal has to do with whereas the 2006 update of the comprehensive plan of the town of Scarborough includes an objective that 10% of new housing units in the community be affordable to low and moderate income households and Section 7C, residential density and affordable housing provisions of the zoning ordinance enables developments in certain districts to contain additional density by providing an affordable housing in lieu fee and Divine Capital proposes to provide an in lieu, in lieu payment to the Town of Scarborough's Affordable Housing Initiative Fund. And this is where my um, proposal comes in. And the Town Council will work with the Scarborough Housing Alliance to develop a plan by October 1st, 2017 to establish priorities and utilize the Affordable Housing Fund to enable the Town to make progress in meeting this affordable housing objective. And is there a second on the motion? Second. By Council Dunn. Um, Councilor. Yes. Um, so uh, in, in going through some of this and um, really trying to do some more research and my homework, um, I was uncomfortable just passing this through and feeling like it was another project that we were just passing through and yes we sat at the table and we said affordable housing was important and we talked about directives and we and we gave homework um, and then nothing happened um, and I just could not sit with myself and allow that to happen again um, so I approached the chair, um, I talked with Councillor Hayes, I talked with um, Tom, um, and it was really important to me to have some sort of language in this that um, makes us somewhat accountable. Um, also October 1st makes it so that this council will see it because there will be a change in November. Um, and so it was important to me to see this through. Um, and by doing this, we're sort of sending it to the Scarborough Housing Alliance to say, all right, by October 1st, I want to plan. I want to know how we're going to do this. I want to know where this is going to go. I want to know what developers we're working with. And that's why I was so happy that you said that you were meeting with developers, because it's cr critically important to me. And I'd love to be in, you know, involved in whoever. I know you have your, a council liaison. I'm not going to get involved in all that. but. You're very well taken care of, but um, you know I'd like to be involved as much as I can. And um, I just, like I said, I my term is up in November, um, and it's been six years of um, an incredible experience, and I'm not going to go out without completing a promise that I made to some residents in this town. Um, and it's it's um, just. I guess there's not much more for me to say. I could probably actually talk for another half an hour, but nobody wants to hear me. <laughs> um, I, might, I might even cry, um, but I won't, I promise. Um, it's just, there are people sitting behind this chair that can't afford to live in this town. Um, there are people that are watching on the TV that can't afford to live in this town, and we owe it to them as count, town councilors to make it affordable for them. 
it's important to our seniors, it's important to our staff, it's important to us. And for people that say that we, um, you know, sit behind this desk and we do this, and we just show up every other Wednesday, I hope that this is proof to you that we read our literature, we spend hours and hours and hours over the weekends talking and um, trying to figure out what's best for this town. Um, and that's what every single one of, we may not all agree tonight on what's gonna happen, but I can guarantee that every single person sitting behind this table has put in hours of work into this. Um, and I'm really proud of them for that, so. That's way more than I needed to say, and I'm a by apologize. No. Councilor Chiasm. Um, so um, I, I do agree with Councilor St. Clair. I think, you know, I do think this is a, a policy issue and something that I, I want to continue. I think it should go into policy and rules and policy. Um, but I do think any time we can hold ourselves accountable is a good thing, and uh, I think uh, the people of the town deserve that, and I support this 100%. Councilor Hayes. Yeah, can I just ask a, a point of clarity when it yes. says... 2017 to establish priori pri priorities and utilize. Does that mean the monies are actually going to be put to work by October? I, I just because it, it sounds like and utilize the affordable housing funds. Yeah, it does sound like it. You're right. So, so, so just a point of clarity. Absolutely. I was yeah. saying. We wouldn't be able could, to. It could be. Uh, you're right. That's probably unreasonable to expect. Uh, frankly, the way this is designed, all the money won't be in. Uh, there'll be some time coming in. So maybe that word could be changed from and to two. So to establish priori priorities to utilize. To utilize would work. Well, so all, all that, I'm oh, sorry. That would to utilize would work, point. right? So to clarify though, there is $40,000 in that fund now that could mm -hmm. be used and expended for this purpose based on the current language. Oh, okay. Correct? There is. So. If you want to amend your uh, motion to uh, substitute the word to, my second would accept that. So I'd like to, yeah, I'll, I'll amend the motion to add the word to. In place of the word and. Yes. Thank you. Second. Sorry, so now. Thank you. Sorry. My apologies. So now it reads the, to develop a plan by October 1st to establish priorities to utilize. Yes. Is that what and, to, and to utilize. Oh, no. Yeah, you're right. To priorities to, to, to enable the town oh, to, to make progress. Yeah, there are a lot of twos. The grammatician in me is. is uh, <laughs> what kind of word is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm making, we're making up run on sentences. <laughs> I can make up words. Point being, I just want to plan. And yes. I want to put it in the fact. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Other comments? Councillor Foley. Um, I just, Kate, I like the, uh, Councillor St. Clair, thank you, because I like the substance this adds to it and the accountability piece I think is important. Thank you. Other comments? Um, so I would just say that I think it's a really thoughtful amendment. And, and, yeah, uh, I, I, I like it. I agree. Um, and just to add, I, I really want to th uh, thank Councillor St. Clair. She did give me a call and I said, um, regardless of uh, any of the conversation and outcome, this is a, a um, a constructive amendment that really does um, hold us accountable. So I really appreciate the work that she did and talking to everyone about it. So I think it's a, a very good amendment. Uh, if there's no other comments, all in favor of the amendment as presented. And that is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. The third amendment is um, I'm going to turn this um, over to Councillor Foley for presentation for the amendment. Okay. And. Um so I think by now it's no secret that I am a um, strong proponent of inclusionary models. Um, and part of that I, I know stems from my work as an educator. Uh, in education, we talk about inclusion a lot, uh, particularly. Council, I'm sorry, yeah. if you could make the motion first sure. and then we can get into the explanation okay. of why. I'll make my motion to yeah. amend the contract zone. I'm gonna skip some of the whereases, but keep, keep the key kind of important ones. Um, whereas the key objective of the Highest Parkway Zone is to create a mixed-use development, specifically businesses and, house, and housing mixes, whereas due to market conditions favoring, multi, favoring multifamily housing, the developer of this project has proposed, proposed changes that will elim eliminate the mix of business and housing, whereas the town of Scarborough is in clearly need of housing for members of our workforce, such as teachers, firemen, police officers, and other working people. And whereas the in-lieu fee provided for in our ordinance was envisioned to be used as part of the density bonus requirements, not for large-scale multifamily projects, and has not yet resulted in affordable units, therefore it, 
or be ordained, therefore be it ordained that the contract zone shall be amended to include the following. Uh, number one, 10% of the total number of units approved shall be built as affordable units as defined in our zoning ordinance and shall be here and after referred to as workforce housing units. Uh, two, workforce housing units shall be mixed within the project, within each building, and included in all phases of the development. Three, workforce housing units, housing units in phase one, sorry, must be completed before the developer moves to phase two. Workforce housing units shall be built to the same standard as market rate units, and the developer shall follow all other standards for affordable units, including included in our zoning ordinance, except that no fee in lieu of developing the units may be paid. And workforce housing units shall remain affordable for 99 years, using housing covenants as part of the deeds. Um, and is so there a second? Second. Thank you. Council Foley, comments? Um, so again, going back to the inclusionary piece in education, we talked about inclusion a lot, uh, particularly with our special ed students. And while we talked about it a lot, it wasn't always practiced um, and in terms of what it means. And for me, it's, it's a matter of principle. It's really, really important. Um, I, I want firefighters and police officers and teachers uh, you know, living in an in a economically diverse community. And I think that's the greatest use of this property. Um, I also believe pretty firmly that while those 29 units might um, decrease the profit margin, I don't think there would be any loss uh, even on those units. I think there would still be a profit to be made. It would just be uh, somewhat lower. Um, and there's still a lot of money to be made. I don't feel terrible about that piece. Um, And lastly, I think because I'm happy to hear their support for sending um, the idea of inclusionary zoning to ordinance, I hope we can get that done sooner than later because I do believe if not this project, there could we're setting a precedence for other contract zone areas uh, whereby we would also we kind of run into the same brick wall um, or that it's not a brick wall at all, but the same issue of you know having to demand it versus having it already be a part of what we do. So um, for the precedence pieces. So those are the reasons that I would really love to see us do it in an inclusionary model, despite the fact that I know a lot of people feel that Luffy is better. Additional comments? Council Chiazzo? So um, bearing in mind the last two amendments, um, it strikes me that this amendment is the antithesis of the first amendment that we passed. Um, and I, I do have some concerns. Um, while I perfectly respect Councillor Foley's opinion on uh, the need for inclusionary, this was discussed amongst the council, and we did, I think, majority feel that uh, when we instructed the town manager to move forward, we gave him uh, guidance on what our goals and objectives were, and I think those were met. Um, I think this is counterproductive to what we had instructed him, uh, number one. Number two, I think, um, I'm concerned that this type of amendment will, um, if, if this does pass, it will impact the project to the point where it will not move forward. Um, and I think the question we have to ask ourselves as counselor is what's really better for the town, uh, this project or no project? And I, I think we can all answer that question fairly quickly in our own minds. Um, so uh, I, I also believe that, um, I, you know, Councilor Foley's comments are very poignant and uh, uh, very um, uh, well received, but I do think that ordinance is a place for that. I don't think we should enforce that with a particular project without some kind of uh, guidance or overall discussion on, a, on an ordinance type situation. So I, I can't support an amendment like this. I, I, uh, uh, I can respect where it's coming from, but I, I really can't support it. I'm sorry. Other comments? Council Roman? Uh, so I, I also would like to look at our zoning ordinance in uh, ordinance committee and um, uh, with the idea that there are zones where it's appropriate to add um, inclusionary zoning. Um, um, I would like to see, um, you know, more diversity in the housing projects that certainly this one included. Um, but I think this is a this is a, is a poison pill and I think it will, um, uh, I'm not willing to support uh, this amendment because uh, I, I, <coughs> I f would be concerned or I would feel very badly again if we had a very good deal that went south uh, because we were trying to make it 
an I ideal. Um, and, um, and, you know, we easily could see that lot sit vacant for another five, ten years. So I'm not willing to do it. Thank you. Council St. Clair, you're next. Um, I just, I give major props to Councilor Foley for putting this together. I think, um, you know, we've had numerous conversations about this project. I think um, in my heart of hearts, I would actually, um, if this was at the beginning of this project, I would fully support this. Um, because I agree with you, I, I think that it should be inclusionary. I, I, I don't think there ever should be a different a difference. Um, like you said, that's what we're trying to teach our kids, you know? Um, that being said, at this point in the process, I wouldn't be able to support it as amended. Um, but I do really support what you put into this. Council Hayes. Yeah, and I guess I'm, I'm in a place where I, I will support this because I, as I had stated earlier, I'm not at all comfortable that we're going to, we've talked a lot about getting affordable housing and getting it in a reasonable time frame. Councilor St. Kara said she's been here six years and we really haven't done it. My concern is in, in all of this process, I've seen no real tangible plan that we're going to be able to take the money we get and to make it into delivered housing within a reasonable period of time. I mean, it's, we're talking about getting a plan back in the fall, so we're not going to break ground for 24 months or so, and I'm just not convinced that we're going to get affordable housing we're all committed to, so I will mm -hmm. support it. I think it's the right thing to do. Also, Donovan? We've never had $700,000 before, so we've never had the opportunity to do something special. From the beginning, I thought that uh, uh, we could uh, get a bigger bang for the buck by uh, taking an in lieu fee. Uh, that really has been solidified by the uh, investigation done by the planning department, uh, the testimony uh, from uh, the owner of Bessie Commons. Uh, I have every expectation and I fully support Councilor St. Clair's amendment because it does put our feet to the fire. And I think we all would like to see this move forward. And now I think we have the means and the will. Uh, and so I, uh, I would not support the 10% uh, uh, proposed amendment. Thank you. Um, to add my own uh, 10 cents worth, um, I actually need to ask a question of either the manager or the ordinance chair. So it's my understanding today that the zoning ordinance um, already proposes that um, all projects have a 10 percent component isn't that correct no it's, uh, it's including not. the comprehensive plan there's one zone oh, it's the the comprehensive plan. zone okay. does require 10 percent um, as part of any residential development there's one zone that has inclusionary zoning i can tell you for years having sat with the scarborough housing alliance it's a point of constant conversation yet they've never gotten to the point of coming forward with a recommendation of any sort okay. um, and I would just remind the council we're at the doorstep of updating our comprehensive plan. I would fully expect affordable housing will be a very central theme in that conversation. And I, I just needed, for some reason, I was having a gap. I thought it was actually in the zone itself um, or in the uh, ordinances. So um, I do want to clarify one point because I, I think that um, um, it's sometimes it's incumbent upon a town council to automatically uh, put themselves in a negative position when something is either not achieved or something is not accomplished, I should say. Um, the fact is that we have not been successful with affordable housing because there has not been any projects to come forward. It's not because of any lack of our effort, because um, who are we going to go out and try to uh, find a developer um, <coughs> who wants to do an affordable housing component? That's not really the job of the town council to go and find that developer that wants to do that. Although at least now we'll have $700,000 that might not find the developer, but we can set the guidelines about what we are truly looking for and then how we can leverage that so um, I, I just I don't think that the council um, it needs to be br just simply brought into perspective about um, what we've faced over the last 10 years with this particular area, let alone anything related to affordable housing. Um, I actually don't see the need for this uh, given the prior two uh, positions. Um, in essence, if I think this through, it's um, if we were to pass this, 
Um, it does not negate the previous two issues. It simply adds on to that the 10 percent factor. So in addition to the $700,000 that would be paid in the fee, we're then saying in addition to that, we also want the 10 percent or 28 units. And I don't think that um, that is fair given the negotiated point that we've asked our town manager to negotiate for us um, and um, the best deal. And it is about looking at the entire community. And I think the prior two amendments are what is best for the community and not this one in particular. But I do appreciate the effort. Sometimes you have to stick with principles, and I respect that very much. Anybody else comments? Council Rowan? Um, so I did want to just highlight some of the successes that we've had uh, in affordable housing. We did, we did develop Bessie Commons. Uh, we, we have done Carpenter's Court, which is in conjunction with Habitat for Humanity. Um, the uh, Southgate uh, House is, uh, uh, did win um, some tax credits from uh, Main State Housing. Um, to develop 38 units on that location. Um, there are, uh, was some bonus density taken uh, at the development in Dunson Corner as well as on, on Eastern Avenue. So it's, it's, it's hard work uh, and it's uh, slow, uh, but we're making some progress. So thank you. I think this will help. Anything else? Not seeing any. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. That's two. All opposed? And that is five. With that, um, are there any other amendments that anybody would like to propose? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I would move to going back to the first amendment, um, a strike number five. Uh, the, the, do, I, do I need to read it right as is? Let me uh, grab my document. Ah. It's the blue yep. on page four. In regards to the recreational fee. Second. That was seconded? Yeah, Peter second. So for the public, uh, just to understand that item number was the item regarding the active and passive recreational sure med, uh, the fee. So there, um, so Councilor Foley is asking okay. to strike that from the contract. So the reason I offer this amendment is a um, couple, a few couple reasons. Number one, we get to the $700,000 number um, in part because we've eliminated this fee. So I, I believe, if, unless I'm, and someone please correct me if I'm wrong, it's, it's 72000 just for that fee. Is that correct? Yes. So correct. that would put $72,000 back in. And my reasoning behind it is I also sit on the Eastern Trail Alliance. Um, I'm also uh, the council liaison to the Conservation Commission. And one of the things that attracts people to our community, and there's just no denying this, is the amazing natural resources that we have. And those resources come at a price to us, uh, maintaining our beaches, the Eastern Trail, um, and even the work that the Land Trust does and all of those pieces. So striking or getting rid of that recreational fee for me um, is a big concern. It was not something that I felt we, I was surprised when I saw it because it wasn't something that we had had an opportunity to fully discuss. So if there are some good arguments to be made for keeping it, I, this would be a great time to uh, hear those. Um, so in my mind, I think by striking this, we might get a smidgen more money, and that makes me feel a little bit better. Um, so there you go. I'll let you guys have at it. <laughs> um, Councilor Hayes? Yeah, and, and I guess I'd, I'd second that. I mean, I, I, I talked to a little bit, you know, and I agree with you. I talked a little bit earlier, but I think the, the, the folks are going <laughs> to be attracted to these developments are going to demand bicycle trails and jogging trails and that type of thing. Secondly, I'm somewhat concerned about precedent setting too, because these are impact fees that we do charge all businesses that come in. If we waive it for this particular development, what do we do for the next development that we're going to do? We know we have others in the pipeline. So I think it also, I have a concern about what's the criteria for waiving it? Um, how, do we, how does this impact us going forward? So I, those are also concerns that I have, and I haven't heard real good criteria for how do we decide whether the recreational impact fee applies or doesn't apply. So those are my concerns too. So I, I echo your thoughts. If you don't mind, I, um, I know Council Chiazzo, you handled it, but I'd actually like for some clarification from the manager. Uh, to the manager, if you can um, clarify for us um, how this negotiated item came to, came to fruition and came to the contract. Um, what was the criteria used for the waiver? Um, and also if you can give some perspective on historical um, 
um, collection or uh, waiving of those fees? Because um, I believe that there is a difference of opinion on that. Uh, it's worth noting, uh, unlike impact fees, which are supported by ordinance and are required of projects, they are, there's no equivocation. They are um, intended to extract uh, monies to, to cover noted impacts for a particular project. Um, the recreation impact fee is not part of the same. It's not a required fee. It's actually in the subdivision ordinance, and it's a fee that's negotiated, discussed with the planning board, and there are several occasions where they actually waive that fee. It's somewhat unique for you. To, normally, you don't even consider this. This is within their purview, and there are very, um, there's a number of cases. Dan Bacon can certainly recite them better than I, but um, oftentimes the developer will make the argument that because of some unique thing they're doing, whether it's dedication of open space, creation of trails, in this case, the argument is that uh, there will be limited impact um, by the residents because of its, the highly amenitized nature of this project, that that fee would be waived. I actually tested this with the town staff. Staff provides all sorts of recommendations to the planning board, and it would, would have been very likely, had the planning board been left to deal with this, that they would have waived it on their own. Uh, so it, it comes in as part of this somewhat awkwardly, but really at the request of the uh, developer to make sure that they weren't going to be surprised when they go back to planning board for final reading. So I just want to provide kind of that distinction between this fee and all the other impact fees and the fact that there is historical precedent for waiving it by the planning board. So can I, ask, I need to ask a clarifying question on who, um, cause on who um, authorizes the waiver. So even, um, just to clarify, even if this motion passes, I'm sorry, if it fails, no, let me see, because no, she's striking it. So if the motion passes and it's strict, stricken, <laughs> sorry, strict, yeah, it's stricken, the planning board can still waive it, correct? It will be a subject of negotiation okay. or discussion as part of the final um, plan approval. Because they're the ones, okay. So to Council Chiasm. So I happened to watch A Few Good Men this weekend. It's never good when I draw movie analogies, but <laughs> it strikes me that, uh, you know, um, uh, I object, uh, overruled. No, I strenuously object. You're still overruled. Um, honestly, I, I'm concerned that we're looking like we're being greedy. Uh, I, the, 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 the deal that was negotiated was negotiated in good faith. It was something that the council authorized and approved, and I don't think that we are really should be in a position to nitpick this stuff. You know, if we want to change the ordinance, let's change the ordinance, okay? If we don't want to change the ordinance, we shouldn't piggyback it on this project. We are really in danger of losing this opportunity if we get too greedy. It's been spelled out a number of different times by a number of different people at that podium. So I, I, I definitely cannot support that. I think it's counterproductive. So, sorry. Council Foley. So respectfully, um, we started to have this discussion, uh, tried to have some individual conversations with folks because of scheduling conflicts. None of, some of those didn't come to fruition. Uh, but it's my understanding that our obligation to our town is to hold public discussion. We have not been able to talk about this. Is in fact, this is the very first time that this idea of waiving the recreational fee was before us uh, as a group. So I'm merely asking the questions and that I feel as, a, as an elected official I'm supposed to ask um, and um, holding a public discussion. So, um, I'm, but I can respect the, your opinion that you don't think, that, or that others may agree that um, waiving the fee doesn't make sense. And I'll, I'll live with that and I'll be fine with that. But I think public discussion is important. Um, and that's part of why I wanted to have it. We, I was promised that we would have, I was shut down in our conversation last time. I was promised a public discussion. So that's what I'm doing. Thanks. Council St. Clair. Um, can you just clarify? Uh, I'm, I just want to make be very clear on something. So you're telling me that if this passes, it goes back to the planning board, and the planning board can then overrule us? Yes. They don't overrule you. You've given them the authority to make that decision. It's different in that vis-a-vis -vis this contract zone, the council is going to be able to take a position before the planning board will act. I suspect they would follow suit. If the council telegraphs and tells them how you wish to consider a matter, I would have no doubt that they would follow your lead. Failing that, 
they are still empowered to make that decision. And I suspect the developer will make a similar argument that impacts are limited if, if not, uh, and therefore the fee should be waived. How successful that argument would be at the planning board, I can't predict. I just wanted to make sure that it was not just right. clear for me, but for people at home. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. Other comments? Councilor Donovan? Since the planning board can waive this fee, and uh, this uh, negotiated arrangement that we now have before us locks in that fee, uh, I'm just not a risk taker. Uh, the $72,000 is guaranteed to be part of this deal, whereas left to the planning board's own devices, they may determine that it's not necessary. And why would we take that risk? Uh, it's now going to be in our pool of money that's available. It's not going to be for recreational fees, and I hardly think that we ought to be uh, looking to these people to close the gap uh, on the Eastern Trail. That seems to me to be absurd. Uh, so uh, in this case, we're going to dedicate it to what we all agree is a very appropriate use, affordable housing. Um, so a comment. First, I, I do appreciate the amendment because it is an opportunity uh, to speak freely about your opinion, so I do appreciate that. Um, I'm not sure, since we haven't talked about this uh, before, I'm not sure where any council has been shut down uh, publicly to have this conversation. It might have been privately because it needed to happen in, in uh, public, but uh, no one has been shut down publicly to have their comments heard by others. Um, and I, I just want to reiterate that within this, if we look at the $72,000 in comparison to a $30, $40 million project, um, I'm a little concerned that we're focused on that particular um, a small amount. But I look at the substance of what is actually being included in the project. And when you think about the number of um, tenants or the number of citizens that will be living there, they're including a, in the cost of that, they're including a fitness center, a pool, additional space for outdoor activities that are both passive and active. The cost alone, just think it through, the pool alone from a per person basis is far greater than the $72,000 that, that we would be receiving. So while it might be only for those particular residents, because uh, except for unless there's, of course, um, pathways and that might be used by um, guests and other people, I don't know what's in plan that area, on a per person basis, um, it's negated by what they're offering to their residents. So to me, it's easy to sit there and say, we don't need to collect the $72,000 because it doesn't fill a gap uh, for the Eastern Trail at all um, in comparison to what they're looking for. And uh, take this with a grain of salt. I've been through a lot of different projects that I've always, for some reason, we seem to always get an extra soccer field or an extra a playground field or, uh, when that's not really the type of recreation that I think that the community needs. It needs to be um, uh, more amenable, especially around the Memorial Park area. So I don't have a problem in voting against this because of what is being provided within the project in comparison to what the fee is. If the fee was a couple hundred thousand bucks or, you know, um, I can maybe understand it a little bit, but $72,000 in a $30 million project, I, I just don't see that. So, But I appreciate the, the public conversation. Any other comments? Not seeing any. All those in favor of the amendment? One, Even two. Striking it. Yeah. yeah. Your yeah, amendment was yeah. to strike it? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. All those in favor, sorry, because I, I thought I, I want to make sure, yeah. Peter, you're counting. All those in favor of the amendment to strike? <coughs> One, two, three. All opposed? One, two, three, four. Motion fails. Any other amendments? Not seeing any, the, we are now back to the main motion as amended with all of those amendments. Um, is there any additional comment by council on the main motion to approve the contract zone amendments? Council Foley. So believe it or not, I am still very excited about this project. Um, I think it is going to do an, an awful lot of good things for uh, Scarborough and particularly uh, an unfulfilled, unfulfilled promise at Highgus that we've been hoping for for a long time. Um, and I hope you understand my uh, efforts are always just on behalf of, of what I believe is best for the citizens. Um, so welcome to Scarborough, and we'll get the shovels digging. Any other comments? Not seeing any. All those in favor of the main motion as amended, please raise your hand high so I can count. One, two, three, four, five. All opposed? <clears throat> One, two. Roll call. You want to say a roll call? 
It's not required, is it? No. No. I was going to. I thought about it, but I, okay. it was pretty clear where we were going. So the motion as amended does pass, um, and that concludes our conversation. Thank you. Moving on to the next item is order number. Yep. Um, what we can do, actually, <clears throat> folks, uh, there's a lot of you here, is that we'll take a small recess for about five minutes while you exit, and we can come back to order afterwards. Uh, you know, I think um, looking at the experience of the night of this discussion is very important. Good. That one, uh, yes, we can handle it well. We're doing it. Thank you. We're doing the conference plan. Maybe we do it. No, that, you guys right. get to decide that. Yeah. Maybe we do it in that conference. Okay. Yeah. All right, folks, we're going to get back, we're going to get started again. <laughs> Water. Just kidding. Tell yeah, I know. If you water. bring me water, I'm a happy camper. <laughs> you guys. I talk too much. <laughs> Mouth gets dry. <laughs> if you're staying, if not, I can have you. So no one's going to hear me calling back to order. All right. We're going to call the meeting back to order. We just took a short recess. And we are moving now on to new business, order number 17-027, act, act to approve the resolve to accept donations to the fuel assistance program. And I will turn that um, for opening over to the town manager. Actually, I think I'd refer to the town clerk. Sorry to surprise oh, you, Tody, but I know you've been working closely with uh, Steffi Cox at Project Grace. <laughs> Um, I mean, I'm pleased to speak to it, but I, I, I wanted to give you an opportunity as well. 
Um, I received, a, I had requested a list from um, Steffi Cox, who is the director of Project um, Grace, and she sent me the list of donors for the from the fuel rally. We also have Team Kyle that donated um, monies for the fuel assistance program. Um, I don't have my email real quick. But uh, the, the following donors were the Blue Point Congregational Church, the Char uh, Charlie Burnham Chiropractic Family Wellness Center, uh, Classic Eyewear, Fielding's Oil, Gallery Hair Design, Higgins Beach Association, Jim Conroy and Conroy's Oil, K KCV Trailer Rental, Nellie's Tea and Crafts Book Group, uh, Pine Point Ladies Auxiliary, The Pit Stop, uh, Grace, uh, Project Grace Board and Volunteers and Friends, the Rotary Club of Scarborough and their Interactive Club, uh, Saco and Benefit Savings Institute, the Scarborough Firefighters Union, Scarborough Lions Club, uh, Scarborough School Custodians, St. Max Colby Parishioners, uh, Town of Scarborough Employees, West Scarborough United Methodist Church, Eddie Wooden and Wooden Company, and there were many, many other individual and family members and anonymous donors who gave generously to the fuel fund. I believe they raised over $15,000. So, that's the total. Fifteen thousand one hundred and seventy dollars and thirty-three cents, <laughs> to be exact. And um, I would move that in a form of a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Comments by council. Council Chiazzo. So I, 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 while I very much appreciate the, the contributions from the community, uh, you can still donate. Um, we're still collecting money. It doesn't mean that it's over. There's still people out there that need the assistance. So um, I, I, I commend the, 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 the list, uh, the people on this list and the organization on this list for, for doing that. Uh, we still have clink bags at Town Hall. Um, those are open and able to, uh, to be taken out by anybody. And, you know, a couple nickels here and there really do make a difference. So um, I thank everybody on this list, and I, I hope that we can continue on with this and, and, and keep it moving. Council St. Clair, sorry about that. I know. Um, I, I just want to say one thing, too. Um, it's a great um, opportunity to do something with your kids, um, especially with the clink bags or things like that. Um, I know uh, Team Kyle, we did a, made a donation, and my kids were part of that. Um, and it's just something, it's, it's just a way to introduce them. A lot of kids are lucky enough that they don't have to worry about heat, um, but there's a lot of people out there that do. Um, and it's kind of one of those teaching experience with my kids that when I told them what we were doing, they were like, what do you mean? People have heat? And I was like, yeah, they wake up and they're cold. You know, like they don't have that luxury. They don't take warm showers, you know? Um, so it's, I think it's just another great way to get your kids involved in um, fundraising. And um, we have a, a, Team Kyla has a whole slew of ways um, to get your kids involved in fundraising. So if anybody has any questions, I'm always happy to um, help with that. So thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Uh, Councilor Rowan? Uh, I, I know that we didn't include uh, individual contributors this year, but I did uh, want to point out that my recollection is that the employees of the town of Scarborough also took up a collection and raised over $1,000. Was that? They were on there. They were on, on the there? List. They were on the list, yeah. Uh, but I'm still taking your donations for jeans. That's fine. Yeah, I'm up to, what is it, I'm $18? Glad. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other comments? Not seeing any. All those in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you. Next item is non-action items. There aren't any. Uh, standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. I'll start with Council Donovan. Uh, pest management uh, met uh, last week. Uh, Tom went over the uh, uh, budget. We're probably going to put the contract for uh, uh, management of the, the fields out just because it's a good practice. And Tom covered that. Uh, Mike Shaw uh, uh, spoke about a desire to use a, a product called Rodeo. It's a, a step down from Roundup, uh, less toxic, uh, as a weed control, sort of an edge to edge of pavement. Uh, curbs and uh, just because it's uh, exceedingly time consuming to do it by hand so I think there's going to be a sort of a maybe a one one year opportunity to test that that out so, a good meeting and uh, I got a nice note from one of the members saying they really appreciated having a counselor present so uh, I think uh, this uh, appointment was well received thank you Councilor Rowan uh, Historic Preservation Implementation Committee met last week. Um, we had a 
uh, change in ownership of the property at the corner of um, Saco Street and County Road, um, on which there is a uh, property that's on our list of uh, 48 historic uh, properties, and the owner was unaware at the time of the transfer, um, which uh, is a shortcoming on the previous owner, um, whose job it was uh, to tell them. Uh, that came before the, uh, not didn't get to the planning board yet, but they're starting to put together a site plan, and uh, staff and Jay Chase caught it. Uh, and so Jay and uh, the uh, one of the owners, uh, new owners, came to the committee, and we had a really healthy discussion about, um, you know, kind of what their what their options are and what what we can do to to work with them. So I think they were, uh, she was a little bit uh, disappointed, but I think she was uh, really appreciative to to have the committee as a uh, a working partner in how to move forward. Hey, thank you, Councilor Foley. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. Did uh, you more? I'm sorry. No, I, I just had a quick question. If I could yeah, through, so through the through the chair, um, do we have any kind of? I mean, Portland, they have the plaques that they put on the buildings. Do we have any kind of of uh, building identification or anything like that in Scarborough? Not yet. <clears throat> Is that something we should be looking at? I think that's a great idea. That's all. Sorry to interrupt. We do have a system. The, the list is finite. We do have a list, in, list uh, process internally for staff to catch it, and it sounds like it worked. This might yeah, be the yeah. first time one process, can process worked except for the previous owner had the obligation right. to right. let. I'm just thinking in terms of, you know, just to, even if it's something, uh, you know, uh, as a, mm -hmm. a, a, an honorary plaque or something or whatever, to not necessarily a, a, a label like a ugly sign or something, but, you know, I mean, Portland has a, you know, uh, it may not be the be most beautiful thing, but it's at least something where you, anybody will walk by and notice, oh, that's an important mm. building, that's a historical landmark or something like that, but just a thought, sorry. Anything else, Council Rowan? Uh, uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Council Foley? Uh, yep, I have several. It's been a busy couple of weeks. Um, rules and policies finally met. Um, uh, we discussed being prepared to offer support as needed for both the Appointments and Communications Committee um, as they undergo some, some changes and may need to push some pieces through our committee. Uh, we also, God, I'm sorry, my eyes are horrible. We also discussed the pol possibility of a policy or a process around authorizing um, fellow counselors to offer support uh, or to an ability to testify on the council's behalf when we have uh, unanimous support for a piece of legislation or uh, some other initiative, for example, uh, and Councillor Donovan's gonna take a stab at some language around that. Um, all the committee members agreed to kind of go back through and review policies, kind of take a look and see what hasn't been touched in a while and, and what might need some freshening up. Um, there was something mentioned tonight, so uh, please feel free as those things come to you. Um, pass that forward to us. We'll be happy to take a look. And per the request of Councilor Rowan, we discussed the establishment of an intercultural uh, and diversity committee. Uh, we reached consensus as a committee that we would love to invite you back to our next meeting <laughs> at 4 p.m. on April 25th to uh, provide us with a little bit more information and direction on what it is exactly that you're looking for. Uh, we also are going to do some prelim research on what other towns and organizations are doing uh, to that end. So that may help inform us as well. Uh, Conservation Commission, um, their February meeting that I missed while I was in Vegas, I didn't miss because they had a snowstorm. So um, there was continued discussion around uh, Avenue 2 and uh, perhaps a point of clarification um, needed, uh, not for discussion tonight obviously, but um, one, one committee member was of the understanding that we are in uh, formal negotiations down in, in regards to Avenue 2 another committee member um, stated that they believed that we and were told that we were not in formal negotiations so I just think as a point of clarity for the public and for ourselves um, we should make that known uh, one way or the other my understanding is we are not um, there was also discussed concern about the tree cut at the Mussy Road site um, the DP is, in, is aware of it and is involved. Do you guys know about that? Okay, we can skip on for that. Um, the commission is interested in exploring uh, if and how there would be official council support for the Seth Berry bill on solar. I'm not sure if you folks are familiar with that bill as well. And you know, basically what I told them is that it would, in order for the full council to support something like that, uh, we would have to have a, a unanimous dis agree agreement that we do support that bill, um, <coughs> but we, I would certainly bring it to you guys to consider and 
figure out how, how and where that might be possible. Um, <clears throat> the Commission also is continuing their interview project around the sea level rise and flood resiliency. Um, they're sensitive to the fact that some of the departments are going through some leadership transition and so they've changed their schedule around accordingly. Um, that's it for that. The Eastern Trail Alliance meets tomorrow. Uh, I was able to connect them with uh, a good friend of mine who's the executive director at the Southern Maine um, Conservation Collaborative and they're really excited to uh, become a formal part of that collaborative because they, they feel like they're going to be able to leverage so, a lot of that those contacts for um, some of the work that they're doing and they're definitely still accepting donations um, for their Close the Gap campaign. Um, I attended a host of other community events, composting presentation offered by the Scoville Foley real estate team. Councilor Donovan did an awesome job uh, presenting for that group and there, were, there was quite a few citizens there. Um, ordinance I will let Councilor Donovan talk about that we met, communications met, Councilor St. Clair will talk about that. And uh, last but not least, um, I met with Officer Tim Barker who is starting a youth leadership program this summer and um, it's very preliminary right now, but I think it's gonna be a really great opportunity for some of our middle school age kids who don't have uh, summer camp opportunities. So uh, my background in kind of adventure-based education is lending itself to giving him some great ideas. So That's it. Council St. Clair. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, uh, can the communications committee met um, we're still sort of kind of getting our feet wet and um, we have a um, lot of stuff in communications um, we did talk we had sent out a survey um, to internal communications just a quick I called it a kindergarten survey um, because that's how easy it was to do um, I didn't get all those back um, so if you still have those floating around it would be awesome if you return to them to me um, to be frank, they were sort of more of like a way for me to judge internal communication. Um, and so not that it was necessarily the best way to judge it because it wasn't a high priority item to everyone, but to me it was. Um, and so I sort of used that as feedback to my committee. Um, so one thing we're going to work on is, you know, how to um, maybe prioritize some of our internal communication um, we're all kind of bogged down with stuff and we all get a lot of emails um, So we talked about that um, we talked about um, We reviewed our statement and passed that on to rules and policy um, our mission statement um, with the help of Councillor Babine um, and We talked about um, our PSAs our public service announcements um, and we met with Mike from um, the cable community he runs here um, and he was great he was um, full of information which is wonderful and we talked about um, it's really kind of exciting um, the more we talked about it the more I thought I was excited but then I got really excited because we talked about even going to out um, into Scarborough and visiting some of the historical sites um, and um, interviewing counselors and um, interviewing staff um, being able to talk <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Um, being able to talk about the budget. Um, we talked about people being able to submit questions that we could um, discuss and get answers to. Um, so it was kind of a, it was kind of an exciting thing. Um, if you're into that kind of stuff, it was, yeah, which obviously I am. Um, we talked about idea items for the leader or the newsletter. Um, and so Katie was working on a couple people to reach out to um, thank you for those of you that got back to her um, The information that was given back to us was all really valuable um, and very helpful. So I really appreciate that um, We set some goals for our next meeting um, and that was good and then um, One thing that we came decided on was we had to come up with like a blurb sort of for the home page of the communications and so we talked about um, the role of the communications committee is to review, improve, and build on all internal and external communications. Um, pretty basic, pretty um, dry, but I think it kind of cuts to the point. Uh, and I'm excited. I think this is a good group. And um, obviously, if anyone has any questions about it, please feel free to send me an email. <laughs> and I'll answer it, I promise. Thanks.
Councilor Hayes. Yeah, a couple things. Um, on March 2nd, the Joint Finance Committee meet the, the Board of Education and Town Council. We kind of again talked a little bit about the budget forum this year, what worked last year, what we might want to do differently. We actually have a survey now that's up and running, so if people want to give some feedback about how did that work, what they'd like to see for changes, please, please do that. Um, we talked a little bit about budget drivers and what's coming and what the, the budget season might look like. Um, we did get some information from the Board of Education saying that, you know, Augusta, you know, is at least indicating at this point that there may be a significant reduction in, in school funding, but it's very much in flux. But we did start talking about that and, and figuring out how that factors into what we do going forward, which really ties exactly into what, what Kate was just, um, Kate St. Clair was just talking about around communications. Larissa Crockett, who is a great asset, um, has actually done some, some listening sessions with folks. And not a surprise, but she found out that seniors really get their information from the leader. There's an awful lot of people that are on the website and Facebook. And so we're really thinking about how we fold that into how we communicate going forward. What she did hear, and, and again, this wasn't huge samples, but she, she did hear that there's you know still trust issues. Um, and then in, in particular for the budget, people just said that it's still very complex to them. So it was kind of good feedback, and I think that's kind of factored into some of the work that the communications committee is doing. On 3-6, the town council meeting, finance committee met, and again, Larissa Crockett did a great job of, we've talked about for a couple of years under Sean's leadership, um, trying to come up with some metrics that we can use to really measure what's going on in the town. And, and she did a great job of pulling together some metrics that we think really will inform us and trying to make policies about funding and other things. And she was going to actually bring those and we'll bring those back to you. It's kind of a work in progress. Um, we talked a little bit about just changing the financial statement format so they're a little easier to read. Not, not a lot of changes, but you'll see those on the next drafts that are out. Um, and we did adopt, earlier we had some placeholder for goals, but we did adopt, the, we adopted goals as a town council at our last meeting. There were three financial goals. We adopted those as, as the goals of the finance committee. Um, moving on to the public safety, they did meet on 3-8. They are moving right along. I, I reported last time that they have gotten a consultant on board. They've actually gone through both the police and fire departments and they've actually got sort of a preliminary estimate of what they need for space and their needs requirements. Um, that's moving ahead. They also are pretty aggressively looking at potential sites. So it's moving forward at a pretty good clip. On 314, actually, um, the shellfish and coastal harbor committees were canceled because of the storm. But I, but I think Scarborough is now in the agricultural business. Um, we had talked last time about the Shellfish Commission wanted to get some grant money so they could do a three-year study about could they take a, a clam flat that's not producing and use some new technologies and monitor that and see if they can bring those flats alive. From what I understand, Tom, you probably know better that there's a memo of understanding and yes. there, there's grant no monies that are guaranteed about, and flowing. So yeah, it's, it's about it's a $4,500 grant for yeah. a three-year project. Um, and I think with that, that kind of closes out what I have. So thank oh, you. Can you mention oh. that? I'm, I forgot something. Do it. <laughs> oh, on March 22nd at 6 p.m., there's going to be a communications roundtable. So I think Katie, Kate, and I will be available for folks to come if they want to talk to us about anything. It's kind of a much more informal sort of session to try to get feedback about what's working for communication, what's not. So all these topics we've talked about around budget communication or whatever it might be, we'll, we'll at least see if people are interested in talking and, and sharing with us. So come join us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so boy, do I feel like a slacker. Um, while I have participated in several other meetings, uh, I canceled appointments for today. Uh, <laughs> and uh, long range planning and transportation haven't met. So I have nothing to report. Um, Friday, uh, we, we will be, uh, Long Range Planning will be taking a, a, a trip down to Higgins Beach to look at the impact of some of the uh, ordinance changes that, that uh, the council had made last year with some of the, the zoning uh, changes or changes to the zoning ordinances, more than the descriptive zoning to see what the impacts have been. Um, and uh, also for um, information, there is a public hearing in Augusta on the 23rd to discuss the Gorm Connector. Um, I will be planning on going up um, I believe staff from town is also going, um, but I am planning on testifying. Uh, if anybody's interested in what that testimony would be, I'd be happy to share it. But otherwise, it's as um, I, I believe at this point, it's as uh, an individual citizen. 
with uh, connections to GPCOG, PACs, transportation, long range planning, that kind of stuff, but I will not be speaking on behalf of the council unless I am duly authorized to do that. So. Well, plenty of time Thank you. <clears throat> um, just one item for myself since I'm really just a part of all of your committees. Um, actually, two. First is that I did um, have the opportunity to sit on an interview committee uh, for um, an, the assessor's position. Um, and uh, while I can't really uh, discuss too much of it, I did want to mention that um, Tom has really uh, put together a very thoughtful and very, um, and through Jacqueline, our HR director, very thoughtful and very professional process. And so they are moving forward with uh, um, that selection process. And I, I just wanted to commend Tom because it was a very, th uh, very thoughtful and very professional. Uh, last is that next Thursday, which is the 22nd, I actually will be in Augusta as part of the Legislative Policy Committee for this next week, isn't it? The 3rd, I think, is it's, the first day. You still have two weeks. It's Wednesday. Is it two weeks? No, you're right. Next week. I'm yeah, sorry, next week. Sean. All right. Next week, but, but it's Wednesday because it is the 22nd. I know it's the 22nd. I'll be in Augusta for the Legislative Policy Committee for the Maine Municipal Association. Um, it's our final selection of those bills and those items that we're going to be focusing on as an um, advocacy group. Um, there's a lot um, to take in, um, a lot of changes, um, including one in particular that's significant. Um, that actually impacts um, Scar. Well, there's two. One that impacts Scarborough negatively, and one that I think actually is very positive that you, um, I'll send around. But both are related to education and how um, surplus funds are uh, used uh, when they exceed three percent. And then also regarding um, what was it? Tax assessed values, I believe. I, I, I could be wrong on that one, um, but I believe that's what it is. But I'll give you guys some information on that because it's really, really important Can that you hear it. Can I mention? I forgot yes. something. Um, uh, Councillor Chiazzo, Councillor Hayes, myself, Councillor Foley, all were able to attend the school board. Oh, yes. um, Larissa we'll Crockett was there. Um, the school board. Community dialogue. Beauty dialogue. Beauty dialogue. dialogue. Um, they did. Yeah. Julie um, did a. And the superintendent yeah. did an amazing job. She's just got such a great personality. She's a really good fit. Um, I think. Uh, and so I think they had a lot to be proud of. So I just wanted to make sure that that was mentioned that we were there. I did see the presentation um, PowerPoint. It was really, really good, very informative. Um, town manager's report. Can I? Yes. So I was just double checking, um, and I was pretty sure we voted seven nothing to support the connector. So that might be a perfect example of the kind of opportunity where we could say to Chris, when we know he's going, absolutely, you could speak on behalf of the council because we had a unanimous vote. And that's the kind of, that's the, I mean, I don't know if we have to formally have that discussion in rules of policy before that can happen, or if we can put together some kind of prop, proclamation, but that's something I'd be very comfortable doing, and, and I just want to throw that out there. Um, I, 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 I know it know. doesn't happen in comments like that, but because it was brought up, I'm just throwing it out there. Sure. Um, I don't even know where to take I'm going to think about it before we get to <laughs> council member comments sure. and turn over to the manager, if you don't mind. Sorry. That's okay. It's been a long day. I get it. Good. Uh, we're in full budget mode, so if you see me and my eyes are crossed in the next couple of weeks, <laughs> you'll know exactly why. Uh, I'm scheduled to make presentation jointly with uh, Superintendent Kuchenberger um, at your next council meeting, April 5th. And so we are fast and furious putting the final pieces together. Um, I expect we'll be working very closely with our school colleagues, uh, really uh, with this one budget approach. Uh, so far, so good. It's always uh, apprehensive working with the new superintendent and I'm sure her with me but so far we've had a very good re working relationship and I expect uh, very good results out of it um, the I was asked to update on a couple of things that are ongoing and uh, it's been weeks if not months that anyone's heard anything the tax appeal cases these are a number mm -hmm. of uh, ongoing tax appeals dating back to 2012 um, we've had some winter weather challenges. In fact, last night was to be the first night of uh, hearing those, so I think they wisely canceled those. But they have found dates, and it's been a real challenge to find dates that work, you know, with space and all of the parties involved. But March 28th, 29th, and 30th have all been scheduled uh, to hear those and to allow enough time for deliberation. So by the end of the month, uh, we should hear and know where at least our Board of Assessment Review uh, sees that going as regards Avenue 2 as the council will recall we there was a workshop in these chambers I don't recall exactly when but six weeks ago mm -hmm. maybe eight uh, I, I understood there to be a fairly clear consensus position of council that 
I was to continue to work with the abutters, uh, but in no way, shape, or form uh, was to bring anything back that didn't have public access to the beach being uh, front and center as part of that deal. And so those conversations continue. I do expect probably in the month of April we'll be in a position to, to report back to you. Uh, so we are working on it, uh, and I hope to get it back to you as soon as I can. Um, many of you know that Dan Bacon has accepted a new position. It's, it's, a, it's a huge loss to my staff and to the town. I think you uh, have seen him as a tremendous resource, and he'll be very, very difficult to replace. Uh, as you'd expect, uh, Dan has been very willing to work with me in the transition plan. Uh, one of my biggest concerns going forward in the near term is that we're right at the doorstep of our comprehensive plan kickoff, and so uh, he is truly heartbroken about not being able to be part of that process, but really wants to leave on as best terms possible. So we're working out those details. Uh, he'll be here through your next meeting, and um, I'll make a point of scheduling something on the agenda such that he needs to be here. Uh, hopefully he doesn't see this, uh, so we'll make it a, a bit of a surprise. Um, so that's a new, uh, very important department head position that I'll be working to, to fill in the coming weeks. Uh, we do have two other positions currently open, so it's been very busy. Uh, we haven't extended uh, an offer for the community services director. I'm not at a point that I can divulge that name yet, but uh, within days, I think by the end of the week, I'll be in a position to make some public announcements. Very pleased with that whole process. I would note we had three internal candidates, which is somewhat unique, but um, it's very encouraging to me that we've got staff capable and confident enough uh, to throw their hat in the ring. Uh, and we chose to involve uh, all employees of community services in the final decision. We had two final candidates that were kind of very equally matched, and so the fit was really essential. And so unlike our normal recruitments, uh, I was pleased to invite them into the process and in doing so kind of uh, give over to them the final decision, and I'm, I'm very pleased how it turned out. Um, Lastly, I just want to foreshadow, uh, I know it's a busy night for all of us with the budget presentation next meeting, but we'd like to engage the council in a workshop to talk about dispatching and kind of the urgency of the issue and the importance has everything to do with what Peter and Kate have been working on for the public safety uh, building. Uh, through the years, there have been ongoing conversations around uh, supporting local dispatch or finding alternatives, whether it's the county or other communities. And this is the time we really need to have that conversation, just kind of check in on that. Um, certainly if we program that space in and build the space, they're likely to be part of our operation for a long time to come. So I think I'd be remiss not to uh, prompt that conversation. The two chiefs uh, have very strong uh, conviction toward that operation, and I hope you allow them the opportunity to uh, be part of that conversation. Uh, but if history suggests anything, they've been fair in their analysis uh, not necessarily letting their bias come through. So I think you'll be pleased with that presentation and we look forward to engaging you uh, around that issue. Lastly, just thank you to the Public Works Department. This storm, though significant, uh, it was kind of the perfect storm from their perspective. It came quickly and left quickly. Uh, they were able to go home at regular time today, which is pretty remarkable given the event we had yesterday. And uh, luckily the sun came out today and helped us quite a bit as well. But I do appreciate their efforts. Um, they very much like the overtime, but they're to the point of the season that they're ready for it to be done as well. So that's it for all? tonight. Thank you. Okay. Um, to address the uh, uh, recommendation or comment by Councilor Foley regarding uh, speaking on behalf of the council, what I would like to ask before getting into council comments is um, uh, because we don't have a straw poll, a consensus. Um, in fact, if no one says, based on what I'm going to say, if no one says anything, then I would conclude that the councillor can actually speak on our behalf. Um, so I would recommend that uh, Councillor Chiazzo, if he so chooses, because it was a unanimous decision, can um, speak on behalf of the entire council. If you object to that, then please provide that comment. Um, otherwise, I would um, ask the councillor to take that under council and use his best judgment. So. Not having any comments, you can use your best judgment if it's personal or if it's on behalf of the council. Okay. Um, council member comments, Council Chiazzo. 
Uh, so thank you for that. I will be sure to share my comments with everybody before I go up just to make sure that there's nothing out of line or if anybody has any concerns or questions with anything. Um, I, I don't foresee it to be that controversial, but, you know, again, I, I will certainly make that available to you before beforehand. Um, the only personal comments for me, um, congratulations to Dan. I'm really going to hate to see him go, but, um, you know, you always wish people the best uh, thing that's best for them, and it sounds like it's a great opportunity for him, and he definitely deserves it. Um, and uh, I'm glad to, to at least know that he's going to still be in the area and uh, we'll be able to lean on him, I'm sure, uh, with, with push comes to shove. We just may have to pay him a little bit more yeah, than we have in the past. <laughs> but uh, that, that wealth of knowledge still stays in the area, so I think that will be, uh, that'll be greatly helpful. So congratulations to him, and uh, uh, I know he's going he's gonna to do a fantastic job in the private sector as well. Councilor Hayes. Yeah, just two quick things. I'll kind of build on the town manager's comments about public works last night. I was watching the news today saying that in some places in Portland, the, the rate of snowfall was just incredible. So the fact that they were able to keep up with it, keep mm. the roads clear was, you know, remarkable. I know some people may get frustrated, but they really do a great job. So shout out to them. Uh, they did a great job. Secondly, it was me mentioned by Councilor St. Clair, a bunch of us went to the community dialogue. They really, really do a great job. And I was really struck this year really by three things. One, I actually got up and asked a question. I was terrified to do it. <laughs> but they were kids in the middle school that were getting up and they agreed to host a debate table. They had a dialogue table. They were very articulate. I was really, really impressed by their speaking skills and fearless. I mean, I could never have done that. Two, um, what really came out of that, and it kind of, you know, I know for, for Councilor Rowland and his wife, the work around Scarborough Kindness, it was, there were three, there were at least two questions about how could we create a safe place for kids to have civil dialogue about whatever it may be. And I think it was somewhat sparked by the, the you know, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, that it's gotten so viral or viral mm -hmm. about Mm -hmm. debates but there were that was on their minds and a third question I thought was really good there were a lot of teachers there there were kids there there weren't a lot of parents there and, and one of the questions was how can we get parents and seniors in our community more engaged in the education so I thought those are three really rich conversations so I, I just shared that and thought it was, thought it was really well done so just you know shout out to them and say thanks Thank you. Councilor St. Clair. Um, I, us I don't usually, I usually, I'm usually so tired by this point that I'm like, let's go. Um, but I did want to make one, just one follow up point, um, you know, to, to the debate earlier with the Divine Capital Project. And, uh, and just to say that uh, I'm going to stay on top of that affordable housing piece. Um, you know, I think Councilor Babine did have a good point in the, in the aspect of, you know, there hasn't been a lot for us to to choose from or to, or to put things into. And yeah, there have been a couple of small projects that have happened. Um, but I just, when I say that I blame myself for, for part of that, I, I genuinely do feel that. Um, I do feel like, you know, there are areas or times maybe where I, where I could have been um, where I could have pushed more, or I could have um, asked more, or I could have done more, um, and um, I just I, I do feel like I, I've let some people down, um, and I take that really hard. And so, um, you know, my goal over the next few months is is to make sure that um, you know we're doing whatever we can to find those areas where we can build those spaces um, for those people that so richly deserve them. And um, like I said, um, there's a one. There's a difference between Section 8 housing and affordable housing, and that's something that I think a lot of people need to be educated on. Um, and two, I think that people need to remember, regardless of whether it's Section 8 housing or affordable housing, everybody has a right to um, have a roof over their head, and clean water, and a place to sleep, and have it be warm. And um, so uh, that being said, um, with the time that I have left, um, I'm going to make sure that not, not only do I hope to improve communications, um, I'm going to work as hard as I can to make sure that um, when I walk out of here, there's some sort of project going on that if, includes affordable housing. Excellent. Councilor Donovan. 
Uh, I, my, I skipped over my notes on the ordinance committee, uh, uh, but we did. We had a very good meeting, actually. The, the fireworks aspect is coming along. We, we're going to propose to eliminate uh, July 5th, end everything at 10 p.m., uh, and have a permit profit process. We're not going to be able to bring anything to you for another month because we want to meet with the chiefs uh, the first week of April. Uh, to make sure that the permit process is uh, consistent with how they view uh, their responsibilities. So, but, but we had a pretty strong consensus. Uh, uh, Will sits on the committee, Kate and myself, and so it was unanimous that we, that, that was the direction we were going to head in. Uh, we also <clears throat> uh, made some progress on the uh, good neighbor intrusive lighting. I think we're going to be able to uh, bring something to the town council relatively quickly on that. The uh, sign uh, aspect is more complex mm -hmm. than, than I at least first thought. And uh, Larissa Crockett uh, and I had been working at it, kind of staffing it on behalf of the Ordinance Committee. And the more we dug in, the more we realized there's more to it. So that one's going to go a little bit slower. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I went to the Vision Committee uh, a meeting recently. Uh, no one was assigned to that. So I sort of self-appointed <laughs> uh, because I like that group. Uh, but we had a great discussion about uh, complete streets uh, and that the thing that Scarrow has to sell is outdoor recreational life. Uh, and so uh, uh, bike paths, sidewalks, uh, uh, roads that are friendly uh, uh, ought to be a, a critical part of, of what we're promoting and was a good discussion uh, in anticipation of the comprehensive plan. Um, Energy Committee met this morning, but only uh, Carrie Strout and David Kirsten and I showed up, so <laughs> we, call, we call that one off. Uh, I went to the Echo Main Excellent, uh, uh, Echo Excellence Awards event uh, uh, this week. Uh, Mike Shaw was there, Carrie Strout was there. Uh, uh, Stu Axelrod got a Lifetime Achievement Award uh, for all his, he, he's of course known to us as the general manager of Pine Tree Waste, but he's <clears throat> on SEDCO board and energy committee and uh, a great person. And uh, his wife and daughter were there to, to see him receive that very nice award. Uh, other um, Scarborough uh, company, Wild Birds Unlimited, uh, for their sustainability efforts. Uh, was recognized. They are <clears throat> in the little strip mall to the left of Cabela's. Uh, and uh, so I uh, uh, want to throw uh, say my congratulations to Laura Turner and her team of people. Uh, uh, also last week, uh, Dan Bacon and I were interviewed <clears throat> by the Maine Municipal Association's editor of its monthly magazine, The Townsman, uh, for our character-based zoning at Higgins Beach. And they, that's, a, that's breaking new ground <clears throat> in the state of Maine. Uh, and uh, so there'll be a story in the May uh, article of the Townsman on that. And they asked us to uh, present at their annual meeting uh, also, uh, because they think that uh, it'll have a high degree of interest uh, within the uh, uh, municipal association community. Uh, also went to uh, I was invited by Jody Shea. She works for Scoville, Scoville, Scoville Foley team, Realtors. And she, uh, you know, they, as a company, put together a public interest uh, get-together at uh, O'Reilly's. Uh, Thirty people showed up. It was very nice. They had a uh, Echo Maine representative speak. Uh, we had uh, Kerry speak, and I spoke. So uh, it was really a, a very nicely attended. And there seems to be a lot of enthusiasm, uh, people calling, saying, why can't we be part of the pilot program? So uh, it's, uh, I think it's getting off to a good start. So there you go. Thank you. I forgot, I forgot where we were. I forgot what we were doing. Sorry. Sorry. It's been a long day. I'm sorry, Councilor. Councilor Rowan. Uh, we're doing personal comments. Co personal comments? Okay. I'm sorry. Um, the, uh, so talking about Dan and the, uh, the character-based zoning in Higgins Beach just makes me 
sad. It's, he's going to be really hard to replace. Uh, but uh, but I do wish um, Dan the best of luck. Um, um, the other comment was, oh, uh, Maine Boys to Men, I wanted to thank them. Uh, they have partnered with our schools and they're doing programming at the high school and the middle school as well as uh, community programming. Um, and their goal is to uh, build emotionally healthy, respectful, nonviolent men. Uh, and they had a screening of, um, of a uh, film called The Mask You Live In, which you can find online, um, on the first uh, over at the high school. Uh, we had a meeting that night, um, but um, Aaron was able to go. Uh, the Kindness Project was a, was a sponsor and, and uh, helped bring them uh, to town. Um, and uh, she um, was really struck by just, there was a, a discussion panel afterward, and she was just really impressed with the high schoolers that were standing up and, uh, and what they were saying and uh, uh, really wanted to express her pride in their performance. And, the caliber of the suit. We're cranking out here in town. So. That's all. Thank you. What's up, Foley? All right. I'll try to be quick. Um, yes, definitely want to give my very best to Dan Bacon. He'll be sorely missed and hard to replace. Um, I want to thank my fellow counselors for uh, what I see anyway as a really robust uh, conversation tonight. I know it's not always comfortable to be on opposite sides of the fence on issues or to disagree about the, the devil and the details, but I think it's important um, and uh, I, I appreciated that. So I uh, want to give a quick plug for um, Carrie Strout who is taking over the uh, supervision of the beach plover monitoring um, program. Uh, those little cutie pies are on their way migrating, uh, e even despite Stella, and uh, hopefully they fared well in the storm. Um, they're somewhere mid-coast right now, as I understand it, and could be arriving. So Higgins Beach has a lot of volunteers, uh, Pine Point and Ferry not as much. So if you have some morning time uh, available this summer and are looking to volunteer, be on the lookout. She's going to be putting something out um, so you can sign up to do that. They're awfully cute. Um, that's it. Oh, and I also attended the community dialogue and agree with everything I said. It was awesome. Very, very well done. Thank you. That was quick. Thank you. Uh, only two items. Uh, one, very quickly, um, I will cover uh, my comments and roast and compliments of Dan at the next meeting. Um, so we'll wait for that. And I did want to just mention as far as tonight's conversation, um, I hope that we all take a moment to reflect when we go home and think about the work that we did. This is a very, this is a pretty significant move forward for our community and where we're going and particularly the development of the parkway, um, but also in the cultural change of the community as a whole. So, you know, to hear all the work that we're all doing, whether it's the, you know, to move the, uh, the uh, cultural committee forward idea concept, um, I think is a, it's a very significant move all the way around and we're doing a lot of very good work. So I truly hope that, um, even though it was a five to two vote, it was a very, like, you know, Council Foley said, a very robust conversation. Um, I believe everyone's comments and positions were well respected. Um, and we're not always going to be unanimous. I mean, can you imagine if everything was unanimous? Um, it wouldn't be necessary to have a debate all the time. And so I, I'm very appreciative of the work that we did. I really wanted to thank staff um, all the way through, you know, Dan, Karen, uh, Jay, planning, uh, pl please extend uh, uh, gratitude to the planning board. They still have some work to do regarding the final plan, um, but it truly is a win-win for the community in moving that forward, and I'm, I'm very, very excited about the development. So um, this is probably the one, and I've been here since 2000. I think this is probably one of the most significant, you know, something for perspective. I was going to mention it um, as part of um, the debate, but really it's not. I remember when um, Piper Shores came to town, and the concept, um, every right, yeah, poor Tony. Um, you know, I remember when it came before the council, and there was a lot of perception. Oh, you're going to have this big monstrosity. No one's going to like it. It's going to be absolutely horrible for the community. It's going to be a drag on um, infrastructure, services, um, everything. I mean, it was just you know the pariah um, of of kind of the talk that was going on at the time. And look at them today. And we've actually done two additional contract zone amendments for them because of how they contribute to this community. I'm not suggesting that this project that we approve tonight needs additional contract amendments, but I think that they're gonna, you know, the perception with some might be negative, but I think truly in the long term, this is gonna be a very, very positive decision 
of the council. So I appreciate everyone that contributed, and I appreciate that we passed that. Um, with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor. And that is unanimous. That's the only one I wanted to happen all night.